Hello, all you wonderful beings out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Raw Zim, and this is Data Resistance Squad Scar. Uh, this is episode or season one, episode nineteen, Relics of a Time Before. We shall begin as we always do with introductions, beginning with Kerr. Hello everyone, I am Kerr, I am the Storyteller, I am here to bring you happy, fun times! We're going to have joy, happiness, and a chance for everyone to rest, relax, and unwind here in town. It's gonna be great. I am Raw Zim, and I am playing as Asher, the Labramon. He is Astral Light Type. Brioche? Okay, oh, I guess actually. we'll move to Gary. Nope. Whoops. Oh, wait. Oh, there we go. Wait, I am can I send it? Yep. Yes. I am Toshime, and I am playing Brioche the Burgermon, a basic type. And I am Gartholomew, also known as Gary. I play the funky little Rainamon Charles Madoff, a wind basic type. And he's got a great deal just for you. Hello, I'm Drunk Dragon Era for my own channel, and I am playing Jace, the Black Gillyman X that is a shadow mythic type. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Magna. Sorry, I'm Brian. I play the lovable Dracomon X Magna. Era got it right! Her. Yes, yes, I'm also a traitor. Okay. Um. I'm a fire shadow type. And let me see if I can do the voice real quickly. Oh boy, here we go. Let's, let's get this going. I... God, the queen. I loved you. Sky the Volley is crying because Magna betrayed everyone. There it is. Yeah. Uh. All right. I am Taldirus, and I will be playing Riv. A gleaming oh. endowment. Jimland underscore tip $34. The lost knowledge of Magna's greatest betrayal stealing from the cookie jar and blaming Asher. You did what? I'm sorry, what? You did what? <laughs> no! No, I did not do this! I don't know, $34 says otherwise. Oh, Go ahead, God, Riv. you're making me do this. Go ahead, Riv. Alright, I am Taldiris. I'll be playing Riv, the mythic Earth type Vorvamon, who is totally not having a breakdown. A resplendent offering. Raharu 95 Knowledge. 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 Right. Gimen and Raharu, thank you so very much for those tips. That is the first three tiers of the tip goal completed. Get ready. $16 left. Yeah, but he's got to do left. over the 34. Ah, there we go. A gleaming endowment. <laughs> Brian Wolf tip hey, $35. Uh, Magna did no such thing. He blamed Charles. Hey, Zim, just to let you know... I do have a secondary donation goal ready in case you wanted to set it up. Uh, one specifically mm. for Asher and Magna. Oh, God. Well, finally, those two get on the date already. 
I was wondering when that was going to happen. Why, why is Charles dead? How did Charles die? I don't know. Go ahead and send just... it. Since we did miss several weeks, we do kind of need to recoup. I, I don't like it, but we do need to recoup the money for rent and such. So, yeah, we will do a second tip goal tonight, everybody. But thank you so much for the support and helping us complete the first one. Magna just standing in the corner whistling. I did nothing. I swear. Hey, I mean, with with this tip goal and with uh, the Paralogs tip goal that we made, that's basically one week almost, not counting the Sunday game, because the Sunday game can be hard. Well, if there is going to be a second tip goal, at least you already got $19 towards it. Yes. Me hee hee. So anyways, uh, recap. Uh, who actually even remembers what happened two weeks ago? I think we were three. getting taken away. Three weeks. If you need me to, I can do it again. The full recap for the last session as well as your date, go for it. Oh boy, here we go. So, as y'all remember, before we started last session, we got... Tactically acquired to go meet the High King and everything. So when we met the High King, we started talking for a little bit and then he shut down. Real fast, the new tip goal is up. <laughs> and the first tier of it is already completed. Carry on. Um. So we met the High King, we talked for a little bit, he shut down... The dankest Four of them are inside of Riv, causing Sky Riv to have a shutdown. $5. No Magna did steal the cookie. I was watching from above on a shelf. Why would a good boy of Ali like me lie about this? Of Ali, I was saying that I was blaming Charles. I still stole the cookies. A gleaming endowment. Drunk underscore dragon underscore era tip $36. Jace has trouble believing Magna. And goals complete. Sky, thank Good you God. so much for that tip, as well as you, Era. That is <laughs> first three <clears throat> tiers of the tip goal completed. Good to continue. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Riv shut down. The High King swayed Charles to his side by bringing out a chest full of gold coins that he turned into Scrooge McDuck. Uh, we talked for a little bit and we bartered passes from the High King to allow us to go anywhere we need needed to without anyone questioning us or anything. When we left, it started to rain. Magnus tried to cheer up Riv, but failed doing so because he couldn't get over trying to talk about the information. Um, Charles had to leave the chest and go with Spectre, who's currently not here, in order to find where the ride was while Ash created a barrier on top to pr protect everyone else from the rain. They found the ride, took the ride back to the town, when they made it to the town, Gart was waiting for them, holding umbrellas for each and every one of them. They walked back to the house where Gar kissed Magna on the cheek after inviting them on a date. Where right afterwards, Asher got mad at Magna and told him, You can't mess this date up. 
steals Magna and takes him to do date prep with Jace. And then we ended off with Riv talking to the High King after Riv was in the library. And where the High King revealed that he was Ash. And Ash created a medallion for Riv to where nobody can mess with his data inside or physical. And Riv told Ash not to give up. And now is the date, which was Tuesday. Magnus panicking, full blown, getting almond treats. No, it was pecans. Why am I mixing them two up? It was pecan treats ready, and then Jace helped Magna get ready for the date. Did last minute date prep, and then we went into the actual date when Gar showed up. They had a date and everything where before anything of the technical date happened, Magna fixed Gar's bow tie. Gar told Magna to close his eyes. He turned into Glus Gamamon. Magna opened his eyes. Gar spoke for a little bit, and in Magna's head, he just clicked the pieces. Gar is Leon. We're going into the date where they flew for a little bit. Gar revealed what was happening in the town. Magna did not break down or anything, but he wanted to leave. They started the date over in a bakery where he got a piece of cake for Magna. All the while, Ash was watching with Ash's help. They flew up in a, by a boat that a Ash created. And Asher told Ash to launch cannonballs of water at Magna because Magna did not say thank you for getting a piece of cake. Gar protected Magna, creating a wall of fire. And he looked straight over at Ash and went... Nah, uh They proceeded then to go over to the park where they found a tree where they where Magna and Gar snuggled together for a bit while looking at the stars while Asher slowly pulling Metal Gear styles of stealth to sneak up. Magna was retelling stories about constellations to Gar. Asher bit Magna on the tail before going back to hide. I believe Gar found Ash real quickly. Magna didn't notice until he got hit by a note or stuff. The first one was saying, don't talk about destroying the world. Just don't. Magna said, hey, don't worry about destroying the world. It'll be fine. Nothing's going to happen. So failed the mission. And then Ash threw a message like, hey, you need a kiss now. Do it. Magna tried to climb up Gar when the stream when network disconnect happened we got back they just went ahead talked for a little bit magna managed to kiss gar for like a second or two and then that's it it was fade to black it was a fade to black we never established that we were heading back to drop either gar off at his place or magna back at the manor or whatever. Oh, no, to... it was fade to black because you two went back to his place. A generous bestowal. I don't remember that. Oh, if God. Things tipped $10, <laughs> yes, Asher. I am angry at you, but we're still a team. Zrax heart, Razim heart. I do things. Thank you so much for that tip. Uh, but yes, uh, Asher was throwing notes in through the window at you uh, while you were doing the fade to black stuff. <laughs> Offering oh, suggestions. No. Yay, he got it done. <laughs> Jess, I think you might want to take uh, Asher to a psychiatrist or something. Or like, uh, just like have a talk with him. That seems, I don't know about that one. You might at this point. Also, we have fan art from Raijin that he doodled on his way to the con of Magna seductively climbing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Let me. Yeah, that's seductively climbing.
But anyways, um, yeah, that's a thing that happened. Uh, now Kerr wrote a story. Are you ready to read it, Kerr? No. Well, go go read it. If you don't, I will. We gotta make sure you're here, though, Kerr, because, you know... Gotta listen. I think Kerr has disappeared. <laughs> About to Which give Kerr the warning. Don't share stuff you don't want on stream. Which one are we talking about? The Kerr pre predate or the one from yesterday? The was... yesterday one. The yesterday one. Ah. Okay. You ready, Kerr? Send me a message when you are done. No, you're staying here. I'm not sending you no message. <laughs> Witness your work. Witness your work, yes. You know I don't like it. Well, then and you read it, it out. It can get to me. <laughs> I'll play guitar. Okay, fine. I'll message you when I'm done. Okay. I I my mark here. I'll go I'll go and keep him company. Hold fast, my brothers and sisters. Strike with all you have. Drive these abominations back. A figure belted out. He was glad in the most beautiful armor any of the defenders had ever seen. It was a suit of very heavy looking armor. The metal of it painted a bright gold with a light blue, almost teal trim upon the shoulders and joints of the suit. Every part of the Digimon was encased in the armor, from lashing tail to the reptilian-like head. In one hand, he lifted up a firearm, letting it bark a handful of times, piercing and blasting through a tentacled abomination that had burst from the earth and had been about to devour a handful of protectors. On his other arm was a trio of talons extending from his gauntlet, crackling with energy. Above him, aircraft tore through the air, letting loose their heavy cannons and other munitions upon the filth of the great enemy, even as the remaining survivors dropped back towards the Grand Tower. This is Brother Captain Titus. All warriors, fall back to the dropships with the remaining survivors. I repeat, all warriors, fall back and escort the survivors to the dropships. Gunships, give firing support to the retreating warriors. Priority given to the remaining civilians. A chorus of acknowledgments came up over his radio as he turned to look at the remaining Digimon. They were bloodied. They were hurt. They had lost everything, and they were about to lose their lives. But their eyes did not give in to despair. They burned with the desire to strike back at the foe who had killed their world, and now threatened uncountable others. And they per were prepared to sell their lives dearly to stop that, rather than retreat with the civilians and try and escape. Titus felt a rush of pride towards these Digimon, who would die beside him. He willed his helmet to open, and it released a hiss, upon opening up to reveal the visage of a grizzled, scarred Growlmon. He looked out at the faces of the Digimon as they all looked up at him with awe, deserved for one of the Emperor's elite. Though none of you are from my order, though none of you share my culture, knowledge, or abilities, you have all shown, beyond a shadow of a doubt, your utter de devotion to your node, to the Empire, and to your Emperor. He paused for a moment, letting his words sink in. You could have chosen to run, to try and flee, but you chose to remain, to give your seat to one of the eggs or children, so that one more life might be spared. You chose to fight against impossible odds, knowing your end is assured against our most dreadful foe, and you choose to sacrifice your life so that another may live, 
to buy time for the tower to release the data killer and stop this nightmare from repeating on countless nodes. He reloaded his gun, taking a slow, deep breath. I am Brother Captain Titus of the Celestial Lions. We bring the Emperor's light and his judgment to all of the nodes of the network, and it is my honor to be fighting beside the very greatest the Empire has to offer. He turned back towards the approaching horde, his helmet sealing itself as he drew his lightning talon back, letting energy blaze over the blades. We will not give an inch of land. From here to the tower, we must hold fast and buy them every second we can to unleash the data killer. No matter what happens, no matter how dearly you sell your life, know that your sacrifices save trillions of lives. And know this, that the Emperor himself will know of your deeds and that you shall never be forgotten by the Empire, nor my order. As the approaching horde of nightmarish abominations approached, he took a slow, deep breath, steadying himself. If this was to be his end, so be it. He would not be found wanting by his Emperor. He lifted his gun, his armor's auto-targeting activating and locking onto the nearest target. However, before he could fire, a roar sounded through the sky, and the area then erupted in flames. Two gunships came roaring through the sky, their heavy rifles tearing into the horde as the Digimon began to join in, unleashing every attack they could into the approaching monsters. Titus glanced towards the ship before growling, Brother Holru! Brother Demi! Did I not give orders to evacuate? What are you doing? My deepest apologies, Brother Captain, but you looked like you were about to have a grand last stand, and we thought we wanted a share of the glory, came Holru's voice in his helmet radio. And I could have let Holru show me up. He's always look, He always looks before he leaps. Without me, he'd have gotten shot down six different times before he even got here, Demi playfully mocked. As if. You may be an elder, but I am one of the finest warriors of our order. I'll beat your kill count by at least ten to one before I got to the Emperor's side. Holru shot back, the two bickering even as they unleashed hell upon the enemy, doing their best to try and hold and thin them out so they wouldn't overwhelm the ground forces. Titus let out a soft chuckle. I suppose, brothers... I should not be too angry that you disobeyed after all. I believe I can teach you both a few lessons on bringing the Emperor's justice to these monsters. With a roar and battle cry, Brother Captain Titus charged forward, lightning claws cutting into an abomination. As behind him, the Grand Tower began to pulse with a brilliant blue light that would herald the end of this world. Or, at least... It should have been the end. Helldivers 2 is great. And thus the end of the campaign. How is that the end of the campaign if we haven't been able to do anything yet? Their campaign. Uh. Might want to... There you go. Boop -a -doop. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Thank you, Raharu. Too bad Kerr doesn't like my narration. I don't no, think it's the narration part of it. I just don't think he doesn't like having his work shared in front of him like that. Duke. Yeah, I, uh, th this is literally something I wrote in like 20 oh, minutes. Uh, there's no editing, no cleaning up. This is literally stream of thought going. It's the best way to write. <laughs> Still, it's really but good. I put there's my no escape. I put my all into it. Okay, look, Zim, I, I, I will back him up on this. If there's one thing you can never get me to do, it is willingly look at something being put into the public that I have not put my best into, and I have not put, like, a bunch of copy editing and everything into. 
I, I don't mind people like reading it and like I don't mind you reading it on on stream. It's just like it, it can get to me if I hear it because it's like, oh, God, I made a mistake. I made the mistake there. I made a spelling mistake there. Oh, I should have fixed that there. Yeah, I'm going to stand and in this one. I absolutely hate hearing my own voice when somebody plays music I wrote. <laughs> I, I can't handle it. Oh, we're, we're no. we are our own worst critic. Why are y'all yeah, reminding but me? I was uh, voice acting it and stuff. Uh, again, you voice acting it wasn't exactly the point. The point is, is that he knows every single little bit that he didn't do exactly correct, and he's just going to focus on that. Mm. But hey, look, if we're done with it, that means we can get started on game. Oh yeah, we have a thing we're doing. I can bring joy and happiness and freedom. Sweet liberty. I love um, liberating everyone. Guys, uh, just quick note. I Whiskers partner has injured their hand and they need to go to the urgent care. Um, any commissions that you guys want, please message me. Or if you want to give support for Whiskers and them medical emergency thing, please consider doing so. Um, I just got notified of that. But yeah. Uh. He's wanting commissions to, you know, earn the money, but you guys, you know. Well, we know what the typical is going to turn into, most likely. That typical is going to stay where what it is. Um, this will be something on the side, so please message me if you would like to support on that. Because unfortunately, I do kind of need to, you know, take the log out of my own eye before I pull the thorn out of theirs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. Well, yes, who's ready for happy fun times, everybody? Oh, I am. Oh. There totally isn't a traumatized little Vorvamon just in the library. Oh, I'll get to that as soon as we get the setup. I didn't forget about Riv, I promise. <laughs> I totally wasn't just, like, Focusing on the date and forgot about Riv. Oh no. Don't worry, I got you. After that bread? Well, most of the bread. I need to save a piece for Ash, a piece for Asher, and I need to make sure to save a piece for Riv. The rest of the bread yeah. is going to be consumed. As Ash shows you a spell that allows you to uh, continuously replicate bread from pieces of bread. Oh no. I. Uh, oh, you made a mistake. <laughs> Don't worry, we can always make potato bread. We'll we'll, we'll get Jace back has to that. done Jace has done nothing but replicate bread for three days. So I just want to point out that you just gave me a funny way how to eliminate an enemy. Feeding them bread. Well, no, force the bread in their mouth and just keep replicating the bread in their mouth until, boom, <laughs> pink mist. You can try that on me. It'll never work. I never You'll... run out of room okay. for bread. Now, you see, you see, Magna, that's very funny until you make Grom the Paunch, which you know Kerr will have happen, right? What is it? I'm sorry? Oh, Grom the Paunch. Uh, okay, so in Warhammer Fantasy, and it's Warhammer, so this is how you know it's going to happen. Uh, there was a goblin who ate a bit of troll meat. Uh, it, it's a funny joke that uh, goblins and orcs like to play on each other. And it keeps regenerating while inside someone. However, Grom happened to digest it just as fast as it a grew. gleaming endowment. Gmund underscore tipped $40. Gmund, thank you so very much for that tip. Thank you. Uh, that is the second tip goal fully completed. I can pay yeah, rent. We haven't even... <laughs> 
We haven't even started the session yet. Yep. It's pretty I epic. I appreciate you all so much for that, though. I really do. You know, that, that was a tangent, so let's just ignore it. But bad things will happen if you try doing that, Magna. But yes, uh, so, 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 morning comes to our sweet, sweet Digimon. Except Mag Magna's not there currently, as everyone else begins to stir. You said Neither Riff slept. Neither is Asher. <laughs> you said yeah, Riff slept. It's okay, Jace's first thing in the morning is going to wake up, look over and be like, yeah, sure, you didn't stay out. Oh, fine, whatever. <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about him. I'm not going to worry about him. I'm not going to worry about him. He's I'm so grounded from his game fear for a week. Uh, also, I, I had a random thought, and I must share it with the chat now, because everyone's going to love it. Asher playing Hell uh, Divers on... Uh, on uh, on his Switch. Or on his Steam Deck. It's neither I don't of those. Know, the it's a Valve might dog. Go. Oh no. Why are you giving me ideas for the fic? You think you understand? Asher, Damn it. Now I need to go liberty. Now I need to go install Hell Divers on my dock. Or deck. <laughs> But if it's all right with everyone, I'd love to bring a piece of bread down to wherever Riv is, which I'm assuming is either the library or the study. It's it's a library. Yeah, I kind of guessed. Yes, Riv is in the uh, library right now when you go. Uh, he does not look like he slept a week. Oh, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, Riv would have actually, like, made a little, like, mini barricade using, like, one of the tables and, like, some of the chairs and just has, like a massive pile of books around him. Jay sighs, goes to the room next door, hops out the window, shimmies over to the library <laughs> window, opens it up and slides and then goes, I brought you bread. Please don't disturb me while I plot to overthrow you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Rib doesn't look like he has uh, slept a single moment. <sighs> Uh, Not enough ill. And in front of him is basically like, you know, it was like a brooch mirror kind of thing, right, Kerr? Yes. All right. And he kind of like has that in front of him and has like four books open on the ground, each at like various different points as he's just looking at the thing. All right. Would it be all right if I picked you up, buddy? I uh, okay. can. I still see my books. You can choose one, but we're going to talk. Uh, he's going to look very conflicted. And uh, let me just... Bread. First book. All right, he'll pick up whichever book is closest to him. And the bridge. I'm going to bring Riv to sit down with me, and I'll set him in my lap, and I'll offer him the bread and be like, it's rather fresh from last night. I ate the rest of it, so. He's gonna look at it a little bit and then slowly start to nibble on it upon realizing that, oh yeah, he's just been up all night and hasn't eaten. Are you still on a delay? Uh, n no, not not right now because I, I have I have this and then the High King said that it would it would help protect me, but I don't know how it works, so I'm not I'm not quite sure, so I'm just trying to be like, you know, re really, 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 really careful about it while always having this nearby. I understand. All right. So that'll make this a little bit easier. I was going to do this big rant, but now we actually get to converse. So ready to talk about it a little bit? Uh, sure. So I'm going to tell you some things that you probably don't know about me and some things that happened before. Uh, 
you met me. So, I actually do think I... Not exactly, I know you're going to probably argue this a little bit, but I, I actually do know how you feel. Not, not quite the same thing, but similar. Well, this is actually harder to do than I thought it would be. Uh, sorry? No, it's not your fault. So, I know how it feels to have somebody just go inside you and do something you definitely don't want anybody to do. And especially when you think that you did so much to protect yourself only to find out you didn't. Uh, turns out for the last several years, uh, before we met, I, I just got my memories back. I, I had spent probably the good portion of 20 years having my memories erased, uh, replaced, manipulated. I was pushed into doing things I didn't want to. Friendships were erased, that way I'd kill them. And there's nothing I could do about it. I thought I had myself protected, and, uh, he just went in there and did it. <laughs> so I know it's hard to swallow uh, everything I, I don't think I've exactly had time to deal with it yet but uh, you know staying up all night and not taking care of yourself and planning to just blow yourself up isn't isn't going to help, right? You're just making yourself more of a target. But if I sleep, then I won't be awake, and then I won't notice. But if you don't sleep, you're going to get really tired, and even if you notice, you're not going to be able to react in time. And you forget we're also here. We saw what happened. We're going to be watching you. Well... Yeah, but it, it happened while you were all there the first time. And yes. Well, we also it, then so it didn't. happened again a second time, and then so... No, it's only happened once. The first time, we didn't even know what it was. The second time, we didn't know somebody could pull them out like that, but this is new. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, they were the High King was able to do something to me without anyone noticing or me being able to stop it. The first time he kind of shut up, Vortigern <coughs> froze him completely. And then the other time I mentioned that I, my head was hurting. And then so he rewound me and so, until it wasn't hurting. I don't remember this out of character, but... Uh... Yeah. Well, it's because Riv didn't mention it, but yeah. Okay. That's this this is know. what caused him to completely freeze up, though. Okay, that's new information. Uh, High King's not allowed in your presence anymore. Got it. Oh, he came to talk last night. God damn it. Why don't people respect... <sighs> you know, this is what I don't like about these people. We're just toys to them. It drives me up a wall. It's nothing like feeling like a bloody pawn to everybody as is, but then, you know, you can't protect anybody either. Whatever. He puts out his hands. Whatever. It's okay. Look... Blowing yourself isn't going to be the option. You're it. You're in a unique position, Riv. You realize that, right? Well, that's that's why it is is the option. No, it's not because you now know that this can be done, and out of everybody here, you're the only one with special powers that lets you possibly build a defense against it. You can't guarantee that'll happen next life if you blow yourself up. You might not come across the right data cache. You might not get the information. Somebody might just do it again. If you really think about it, this is your one chance to go ahead and actually work on it. And you can't work on it if you're overly tired because you'll make mistakes. He boops your nose. Trust me, I've been up for long periods of time. I know how much it sucks. Your brain just kind of goes... Pfft. You have so much potential that we don't have. You got powers beyond what I could even imagine having if you're going to give up. Oh, it's it's not me giving up. I I do it to, you know, make sure that everyone else still has a chance. But you That's not how it works, buddy. 
As I said, you're in a unique position. You know about it now. You can build defenses. It may take you some time, and you're definitely going to bed after this, whether you like it or not, mister. Can't believe I said that to something that's probably older than time itself, but... Oh, I only, I only started existing when the world was hating itself, so after... There'd be things that are older than me if it's before the thing got killed and then turned into the core. Yeah, it's still older than I am, though. Probably, I think. I know it's hard to swallow, and I know it's going to make you nervous, and I know it's going to mess you up for a while, and I know that you're scared that somebody's just going to do it. I, I am too, to be quite frank. But I'd rather you not blow yourself up. I'd rather you at least try to lean on us, let us try to help you, and give you the time you need to figure it out. Anyways, if they do it again, that means you'll have more data, right? Which means I... that you can build a better defense. Well, yeah, but I still don't know what they did the first time because I wasn't able to see it. And then because I wasn't on the delay, I couldn't go back and see because it wasn't. But the, 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 the why I'm doing this is just because I, I... I, I, I really want to trust and believe in you guys, but Vortigern is... Every every time he comes out, he'll get stronger and stronger and stronger. And every time you fight him, he'll learn more and more things about you. And we... Every time he gets let out, it gets worse the next time. I understand that. But that's going to happen in the future, too, right? You're just delaying. Yeah. Well, that's that's all we can really do with Vortigern. Well, I think there's other answers. At least I hope so. Well, if... I don't know if this will happen, but... If, if it does take too long... Uh, it might, they might try to, N never mind. They might try to. There's, I've, I, I have my memory of a couple of lives where I've died from old age, quote unquote. It, it, it's, it's not really that. If I go too long without completing my purpose, the core can get mad at me, especially once Vortigern's awake. And it might just try and reset me. Oh, fun. Good to know. We'll work on that too, okay? Well, yeah, but that's also why if I can try and, you know... It, it takes a long time. I don't think we have to worry about it too much, but... Just promise me that you won't do it, okay? I, as I said, I'm far weaker than you. And I think you can trust us. But if we can't even help you, what hope do we have against everything else? I mean, there's you, there's, well, I guess currently Ash. There's this High King fella. Y'all wield such massive power compared to us. Well, I mean, I'm I'm still technically different from Vortigern, even if I'm just supposed to be the shell. Yeah, well, you still are able to delay yourself. I can't do that. What am I supposed to do then, huh? I apparently can just be reached into and just changed, just like that snap of the fingers. Everybody I loved is gone. They're not my friends anymore. Now they're enemies. I... My problem with it isn't that they're able to reach inside of me. It's that they could pull Vortigern out. 
Yeah, that's about the same as suddenly changing me into a monster, is it not? Except you're super powerful, so I guess maybe I just don't compare at all. Uh, sorry, I just... Vortigern will try and end the entire world that has a good shot of doing it if no one manages to stop him. You're going to bed, you know that, right? I mean, I don't really feel comfortable trying to sleep still. I'll hold you the whole night. I'll carry you around. How about that? I... How's that gonna help? Oh, I'll just avoid everybody. Okay, fine, but you have to wake me if any of those teleportation circle things happen. Okay. Well, at least I got one thing out of you. I'm not gonna give up, by the way. I'm not gonna let you blow yourself up. He boops your nose again. If I'm not allowed to give up, you're not. If you're allowed to give up, then so am I, right? Uh, it, it, it's still not the same. According to you, I think it is. Because I'd go further than you would. Go to sleep now. We'll sit here for a bit. I'll clean this up. <laughs> oh, hey. Decent roll. He is actually going to be able to go to sleep. Nice. Great. I went ahead and did a willpower roll. <laughs> <clears throat> he is Ace going has now to adopted able... another child. He is able to actually make himself relax enough to go to sleep. I'm stuck for the day, guys. Have fun. Well, I mean, it's up to the it's up to the last two members. Carl, yeah, Brioche, what good. are you guys up to? About a dollar fifty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dealer. Okay. I. And Charles has probably have gone downstairs at this point, yawning, stretching his arms out, picking off a few golden coins stuck to his body uh, due to last night. And uh, he's trying to prepare himself for uh, some coffee or maybe get one of the humans to do it, you know. <laughs> yep, they would have a cup of coffee ready to go for you. Uh, thanks, you little uh, uh, cool men's. Yeah. Of course, happy to help you, sir. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, anyone else uh, awake already, or? Yeah, I am. How's it going, Charles? Ah, Brioche. Uh, it's good to see you. you just uh, seemed a bit oddly quiet in the house, you know. Like at peace, almost. Ah, uh, we don't have long before things kick up again. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. You want one of these little uh, freaks to make you some coffee, then? You need me to? Oh, no, pretty much. Uh, I'm alright. This, uh, this is cool, man. Hey, uh, hey, Charles. Yeah? A staff suddenly slams down on your hat, and, uh, it hurts. It very nearly knocks you out. Bonked. <coughs> ah. <laughs> ah. 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 Hey there, Charles. I, I think I must have misheard you. I, I, I've been up for a while. Uh, but uh, you didn't just call them freaks, right? As little Ash is looking at you. So deeply into your soul as he slowly leans towards you. Yeah. 
Charles, if nothing else, my family would be the freaks. I'm sure your parents are lovely, yeah, uh, Brioche. I mean, if they uh, spawned you, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, hey, Charles. Yeah? Your kneecaps are suddenly screaming in agony as said staff suddenly makes contact with both of your kneecaps in rapid succession. <laughs> and, and all the while, Ash is just smiling very sweetly and innocently at you. Yes, I didn't. I didn't say nothing. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't say nothing, Ash. It's fine, you know, they're just little things, little practically humans, these families. Good. That's what I thought. I, I, I'm sure I just must have misheard you. I, I'm, I'm sorry for the uh, misunderstanding, Charles. And as he kind of just hops up on the chair, hops up on the table and starts walking past you, you hear whispered very softly into your ear. If I ever hear you talk about them like that again, I'm going to do worse than take your kneecaps from you. Understand. Before he just keeps on walking. Hey, Brioche, what are we going to have for breakfast today? You're like the best cook ever, I bet. Don't <laughs> teach my hamster to suck eggs. Oh, there's a couple Charles, things you... that we could make. Oh, oh, oh. What, 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 what? What could it be? What could it be? Uh, I don't really know that many foods, so... Um, um... Is it potatoes? Potato pancakes sound good. Wait, you can make potatoes into pancakes? No way! Mashing up, frying them. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Oh. <laughs> wow. You got that. That's like super magic. And Brioche, just... are you super magic? Not quite. He's super magic. Totally super magic. And Charles, remind I, me sometime to tell you how the meat is made. Yeah, no, it's no problem. Bruce is going to stand up, tail tucked between his legs. Not looking as chipper as he was this morning. Uh, He's gonna... And as I'm going back to the kitchen, I flash the fatal ladle behind me. Where's Charles? <laughs> <laughs> For, uh, also Ash is looking towards you Charles and the look he's giving you is a just pure imperious look of if you do anything like that again I will hurt you so badly that not even Domino will be able to fix you I'm gonna go see if uh, I'll be right back just to see if uh, Jace needs anything. Uh, breakfast, if he wants breakfast. Bye bye. Hey, he's safe. Brioche is going to show me how to make potato pancakes. That's awesome. Oh, Brioche, boy. take all the time in the world. I, I'm going to go to please. <laughs> Charles is going <laughs> to shuffle his way out of the room. Just to look for anyone else <laughs> to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mostly just the servants that are going about cleaning, taking care of the manor. Uh, all of them always just kind of pause and bow to you in case you need anything. You make sure to pat their heads or shake their hands as you went along. <laughs> And let's see. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny. Magna! See? You wake up. You are not in your normal bed. Uh, where? Why A note smacks you in the head. Magna is rubbing his eyes. He just opens the note he's like where am i did i get 
We need to work somehow? on your we, we need to work on your stamina. That's all the note says. Oof. As the door opens and uh the and the ghoul's Kalamon is standing there with a tray of pancakes, a few waffles, some bacon, and some fruit as well. And two cups of coffee. We're past 15 minutes, right? I believe so. Just double checking, Zim. Sorry, what? We're past the 15 minute mark, right? Yes. For the... It took us like an hour to get into the actual session, so I mean. <laughs> Go down, Magna. God fucking damn it, Asher. Hey, hun, are you okay? I got some breakfast for us. Mag just get a look up, just like. I wasn't expecting to, and I don't remember a lot about last night. Oh, it was I great. Guess. Another note smacks Magna in the face. From the direction of the window. Mag is just going to get up and close the window. <laughs> Before just going back to bed and opening the note. The, the note reads, you should kiss him good morning. I can just literally just give me like You know what, to be fair, this is better than most of my mornings. Magnus As he walks over and kisses you on the cheek before sitting down beside you and starting to get the food up uh for you to have breakfast in bed. Magnus is gonna kiss him back, just like Just kiss him back and be like, Good morning, how are you doing? Oh, I was pretty good. I wanted to give you something special. Something special for me? Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. So I wasn't sure exactly what you might like, so I made a bit of a spread here. But everyone likes bacon, so I figured I couldn't go wrong with that. Not wrong there. But now, did you sleep okay? You were really tired after last night. I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Did you sleep he, good? He reaches over and squeezes Magna's hand and just smiles. I slept better than I have in a long, long time. It was really great, hon. You were really great. Just being with you was fantastic. All in the meanwhile, Magnus is like screaming in his head like, Oh God, oh fuck. We did it. Oh, no. Cut back to the scene. It shows them snuggled up together in bed, just holding each other and sleeping. <laughs> Cuts back to Magna, freaking out. It's like, I don't remember a lot about last night. What did I do? Did we actually do this? smacks no. Magna in the face. I closed the window. Yeah, this one's coming from the direction of the door. Jesus Christ. Magnus is going to jump, being like, Jesus Christ, shadow travel. Magna, it's okay. You're safe here. I promise. Magnus is going to, like, open the note slowly. Just for the record, you didn't actually uh, hit third base or anything, but uh, you did at least get to uh, snuggle him. Magnus we'll work on that. Be... Magnus is like fuming on the inside. He's like, okay, let's go ahead and eat some breakfast before I have to go and talk with everyone. He nods. You know... Another note <laughs> smacks Magna it... in the face. This time as the note comes flying at Magna... Uh, the ghoul's hand flies up and grabs it before holding it out to Magna. 
Thank you. Oh, Magnus is gonna like say thank you without realizing it, and just like realizing that Ugar is holding it is like, uh, okay, let's go. Opens the note. Say thank you for breakfast. I already did. <laughs> Another note. What? Again, okay. Opens the note. And the evening last night. Can I just imagine that there's just a giant pile of crumpled up pieces of paper next to the bed? Yes. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know some of them are like there's a very large pile of them uh asher was stayed up all night throwing notes uh giving suggestions mag just give you like okay Let's go ahead and just eat breakfast, but thank you very much. I just want to let you know that I did enjoy last night as well. Of course. <laughs> you know, it's kind of selfish, but I figure you're going to have to leave me, right? <laughs> Another note comes flying in. What's this one say? <laughs> Are you reading it? Yes. You are not allowed to leave him ever. You must stay with him and make him happy forever. <laughs> Magnus is going to be like reading the note and just like... I'm pretty sure they're going to be worried. But I mean... Sleep in? No, I, I mean, like, forever sort of thing, you know. You said you were a traveler and everything, that you're not from here. So I figure eventually you're going to go back to your own home. So, and, you know, it's... <laughs> I've never really felt like this way with anyone in... I just want to treasure however much time that I'm going to be able to have with you. Even if it's just today. That's... Just last night was good enough for me. Note comes flying in. Give me one second. Give me one second. Like, out of character, I'm ready to, like, either throttle somebody or cry. <laughs> 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 Magnus is gonna open the note I'm informing the rest of the group that you are officially resigning from the group have a nice life Magna <laughs> and you hear Scamper <laughs> going down the hall <laughs> fucking okay Gar so two things real quick Let's go ahead and enjoy this breakfast because I'm pretty sure this is going to be the biggest break I'll ever get, ever, from the group. And second off, if I was going to disappear off the face of the world, like if something were going to happen like that, if I had a choice to go home or stay with you, I'd 100% stay with you. Maybe As in, I would... As in, and I, if I had the choice I, to go home, I'd take you with me. I would stay with you in a heartbeat, too. You're, you make me feel like life's worth living. Like, I was just going through it in a daze before. And I just treasure how you made Dude. me feel and hopefully how I'm able to make you feel too. 
I, I get it. It sounds kind of strange. It's saying, you know, we just met and all that, but it's how I feel. I know. I 100% enjoy this. So, let's go ahead and take care of this. Let's go ahead and eat breakfast, and then I have to go clear up a big misunderstanding with my friends. Okay? He'll nod and give you another little smooch on the uh, cheek. If you want, oh. I'll go with you. Let's go ahead and do that. If you ever need me, he squeezes uh, Bangda's hand. I will protect you. No matter what, I will always be there to protect you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh god, was that actually... It yes, we weird. heard that. Yes. Yeah, we heard that. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that I wish I had mine around. Silly bottoms. <laughs> <gasps> I'm sh shocked and appalled. So Magnus is going to be taking his time eating breakfast with um, as a Gar. As Asher, you make it back to the uh, manor. Uh, Asher is going in and, uh, seeking out Jace. Dad! Jace! From the library, shh. In here. He will go in. Mission accomplished. Magda is leaving the party. Oh, I didn't know that was the goal. Well, congratulations to him, I guess. Well, oh, the, the goal like was to keep the, the goal was to keep him from you know making the, he he's supposed to keep uh, Leon distracted, so he he's staying to do so. Oh, did you sleep? Ah. Uh, When's the last time you ate? Ah. Uh, when were you going to come home and check in? Right now. Come here, bud. It's bedtime. You can join Riv. I'm not moving tonight. Or today. No, no, I'm okay. Gotta go let no. the others know. No. Come here. <sighs> Fine. We'll let them know in the later. After you get sleep. You're lucky you're an adult, otherwise I'd take away your game gear for like a week. Or whatever that system's called. Valve Doc? Valve Doc. Right. Before I get yelled at again, it's a Valve Doc. He gives a snort of approval. And sighs. And settles down. And sleeps. Extra trap, Jace. Charles, as you're wandering the halls, you hear movement behind you. He quickly snaps, quickly heel turn, pivots right to right behind him. His hands out like he knows karate or something. As he sees little Ash just standing there. Smiling at him. <laughs> Hi there. Would you like yeah. to play a game? Did you enjoy the breakfast? I thought she was going to teach you how to do this. You mean brioche? <laughs> yes. Brioche. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was absolutely great. I really like Brioche. He seems really nice. 
he likes making really good food and watching out for everybody. As he um, just takes a step towards Charles. Charles steps back. Ah, that's great, the lights you know. noticeably seem to darken around him. <laughs> that's great. I, you know, Toshi has been my only real friend in the whole world, honestly. If it weren't for him, I, 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 I don't know what I'd do to myself, you know. <laughs> back, back at the camp. <laughs> Another step. Step back. Hmm. You alright? No, mean, Charles. You... I was really thinking. I'm not sure if you really understood what went on at breakfast today. Guys, you, I, you know, maybe I'm a bit of a slow learner. You know, I, I failed a lot of my uh, academics back at camp. You know, or where we can't. You can just use your words, though. You know, I'm, I'm a civilized, right? I'm on. Yeah, you know, but you know, you know, May Charles. Darkness prevail. <laughs> you know, Charles, there's something I really have learned over most of my life. What would that, what would that be, huh? Step, 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 step. Staff comes out, pokes at your neck. The thing I've learned, Charles, is that Digimon like you don't seem to learn unless the lesson pushes against your throat, almost cutting off your air, is beaten into them and forced to abide by it. Yeah, you know, I think... You know, maybe you should just try a different approach. Like, maybe scones, lemon bars. I don't know, the conversation starter. What did you call those humans down at breakfast, huh? Uh, what did I hear? I you can know. say it. Uh, I don't hurt you for it this time. I might have called them freaks. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Freaks. Freaks. How do you think they feel living enslaved to things like you? The 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 staff for a few seconds pushes against your throat to the point where you actually can't breathe before pulling back again. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, probably not the best, but I don't know. I haven't talked to him lately. Mm hmm You haven't. Because it seems to me, Charles, you're kind of an idiot. Out of yeah. everyone in this group, you're selfish. You're full of yourself. And you're acting just like all the other Digimon in this town. I, I, I you know, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm selfish and the idiot, you know, it's, it's fair. I, 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 I just haven't, you know, I, I don't kill anyone. Or I, I didn't enslave these humans, you know. And yet, you seem obsessed with money from the look of it, from the sounds of it, and what I saw with the High King. And what would happen if you took all that money away from another Digimon? Hmm? Would you care if they couldn't pay for their protection? If they couldn't pay for their food or shelter? Would you give a shit? Or would you just take them for everything they were worth? Huh? Huh? Tell me the truth, Charles. <laughs> you know, just... <coughs> I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't steal the bread out of a hungry mom's mouth. That's not what I'm about. What if you were getting paid for it? Ah, it's like, it's like, couldn't, couldn't take the money for that. 
Mm -hmm. Even if it was a lot? Uh, yeah. I mean, if it was a lot, I could probably take it and just not do the job. Uh, but, you know. Charles, Charles, Charles. What am I going to do with you? Seriously, what am I going to do with you? You can put me down right now. You can stop anytime. <laughs> Charles, if I wanted to hurt you, you'd be hurt already. This is just a gentle chat, you know? I am just enforcing my lessons in the only way that you Digimon seem to learn. Ash, my knees still hurt. Yes, yes, the truth does hurt. Ash, look, look, it's, look, it's, it's just a matter of life. All, we all have our vices, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't let them hurt anyone. You know, I, I couldn't allow that. A half Wait. dozen blades of ice form around you, all pointed at you, Charles, when you say that. And for the first time in this conversation, Ash actually looks angry as he's looking at you. This seems very different from the Digimon who was stumbling and falling over trying to fight the Proto-X before and could hardly do a single thing then. Right now he has a dozen ice blades currently all pointed at various uh, lethal points of your body. <laughs> See, what do I want? Oh, well, that there's a bombshell of a question. You can't give me what I really want. No one can. Uh, you know, maybe that maybe it's a bad bargain. Then maybe you should ask for a little less. Oh, I, I honestly, I am honestly curious how you function in the world, how you're able to be like this. <laughs> it's honestly, wow. But I don't, let's... I don't, I don't function. <laughs> I'm I sick, I'm losing it. <laughs> Too much about himself. I... <clears throat> Here. Here, you know what? You know what, Charles? I know the perfect way to make sure that you become a better Digimon. The ball is. You're going to act better. You're going to be more kind, more understanding, more gentle with all the Digimon and the humans, especially the humans. Because if you aren't, Charles... I won't hurt you. I'll uh, take Domino away from you, and I will kill him in front of you and have you watch. Hold up, that's an option? Really? <laughs> Charles, keep doing your thing. <laughs> So this was, <laughs> at this point, Charles's face, you know, would have gotten maybe a little, little shade of blue or purple from the lack of air, you know, just a little bit. Uh, but at this point, all, all the color is draining away, and he looks a little beyond terrified. He pulls his staff back and gives it a little flick as the blades of ice just turn into water and begin to float around his staff. You know what, Charles? I'm really glad that we had this conversation. Aren't you? I think we really helped to understand one another.
Yeah. He's going to walk over and just kind of pat Charles's chest as he starts to walk by. Oh, and one more thing, Charles. Don't tell anyone about this. If you want Domino in one piece, that is. Good talk! So glad to have this talk with you, Charles. See you later! <laughs> skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Charles is going to collapse to the floor uh, on his hands and knees, head down, and uh, kind of gently vomit the two sips of coffee he had onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I do things. Reiterate, don't be rude or else. Smiley he's gonna, he's gonna keep retching even though he has nothing left to throw up. Uh, it's gonna be him for a while. I feel the need to ethereally p apologize to Charles for setting off Ash into being proactive again. <laughs> I, actually, uh, Riv set something off uh, and I'm sorry, this was not Riv. This was entirely something Charles said that was literally Ash's berserk button. And he literally took a sledgehammer and bashed it. Yeah. It was, it was the one thing that wasn't just a funny little quirk to Ash. It was just <laughs> the one thing. It, well, okay, look, if, if you think about it, also just imagine how many times he was called that. And knows that, like, you know, Griv was called that. You know, I get it. I mean, you know, if if, if Ash was going to threaten anyone, it would it would be Charles. I get it. Hey, Charles. Real quick, Charles, did you read any of the stories I posted so far in the Discord? Uh, I didn't read the most recent one. But, but I mean, now that the start of the stream. Out. That was the one read yeah. on the stream. Yeah, so yeah so there, there was a story I wrote beforehand, and you just might not remember it, so I'm just going to give you a quick reminder. Also, for everyone in the stream who did not uh, see it, can know, uh, there was a little tidbit given of Ash in one of the stories where a human that he trusted and cared about was brutally... Very, very bad things were done to them, and everything that he kind of worked towards was ruined. So you kind of pushed that button with what you said there. You brought back very, very bad memories. Well, right, the Charles. Uh, and it is at this moment, as Ash gleefully just kind of skips down the stairs, that Magna arrives with uh, Gar. Hey, Mag. Welcome back. Did you enjoy your date? Was it cool? Hey there, Gar. Good to see you, too. Magnus is going to be looking at Charles in a terrified face. Look straight at Ash and is like, If you did this, I will give you treats. Okay. Ash, Ash just smiles, this big, great, big, sweet, innocent, adorable smile. I need to know what he did, though, to deserve this. Charles was a big meanie face, but we talked about it, and we came to an understanding that such a thing is bad, and he shouldn't do it again. He shouldn't call people freaks. That's really, really naughty. So we talked about it, and I... I told him that he shouldn't do it, and he got very, very sad. And all I understand is that you're giving me the kitty version. There's probably something else said. I'm not going to pry for that. All I need to know is, who did he call a freak? He called the humans freaks. I didn't like that. That wasn't very nice. Magna is doing, like, the dramatic face turn, the slow rise of the face, just looking straight at Charles, is like... Charles, what the fuck? 
And that's coming from Magna. They're giving us hospitality, Charles. Why? <laughs> Charles isn't doing very well right now. You might need to wait to talk to him. Oh, Brioche made a... Uh... Did you know that you can make pancakes out of other things? Potato pancakes did he make? He is like super magic. Super magic. Did he show you how to make potato bread yet? You can make potatoes into bread? Go talk with Brioche about that. I gotta go... I gotta go talk with a very specific Labramon. He's going... He's going... Oh, um... Asher's sleeping with Riv and Jace right now, so they're going next. I guess it can wait, then. Then let's go get potato bread! I kind of had a good breakfast with Gar, so... There's always room for potato bread and potato pancakes, and what else can you make potatoes into? Oh no! Oh no! I don't want to break him! I would talk to Brioche about that. Honestly. And, and you can come too. Um... Uh... Gar, want to come along? Gar will nod. Quick question, what form is Gar in at this point? He's so ghoulous. Hello, BBEG. Gar, sweetie, could you go... Could you... D, did you fall for me, please? So then everyone recognizes who you are um i'm not really sure how usually it just kind of happens so you see for this uh for starters you gotta run a whole bunch and then also you need to do a handstand uh until you eventually <laughs> de -dig evolve and when that doesn't work you gotta you know, break out the paint and, uh, you know, paint camouflage onto yourself until, uh, you know, it eventually will happen, you know? If nothing else, uh, using some Japanese hand sign language, uh, communicate a few uh, military poems and uh, you'll be good. Or, I mean, you know, be born in a specific bloodline. Hey, he's going to take Magnus' hand gently and squeeze it. Hey, no matter what, I'm still me. I'm sure I can talk to them. It's going to be fine. Uh, and in the worst case, I'll still be around, so I can help with that. He's going to lean forward and kiss your nose, Magna. We got this. You and me, together. <laughs> As he reaches down to grab you, Magna, puppies! <laughs> I love you how funny we thing. heard him squeeze his squeaky toy. Yep. I, Nobody I, can resist up. puppies! As he puts you on his shoulder, Magna. You want to know the funny thing that, that would happen right now? Hmm. Digi evolution. <laughs> As he carries you off to the kitchen, uh, Magna. Also, this is now a thing. Whenever Magna is complaining or trying to talk back, he is now going to give Magna uppies. Come on. Even if it's like a valid thing, uppies. Yup. He will. He will literally shout uppies and scoop Magna up and lift him up. <laughs> 
Also, I am now totally expecting fan art of Magna getting uppies by, uh, by Leon. I tried to climb this man on the date and now I'm getting uppies by him. Oh, God. Yes. I don't know. I now fully expect uppies. Raijin's going to, uh, first off, we're going to get fan art of Magna just buried under a pile of n crumpled up paper. Also, I'm also now imagining fan art of the sweet, adorable, innocent looking, uh, uh, Ash threatening Charles. I 100% need that, honestly. I'm making that a, um, what my lock screen. Movie pretty epic, film. not gonna lie. Ash climbing Charles, just like Magna climbing. Now listen to you, you little shit. If you ever say that again, I'm going to fucking break you. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> Followed by... Uh, uh, give me one second. Look, all I gotta say is, is that if it was Domino, this would be a very different scene. But, you know a stranger he didn't know so I wasn't quite uh, quite that and he was smart enough to get brioche out of the scene uh -huh. he did flash that fatal ladle so you know could have just uh, uh, Asher instantly Ash sorry Because this is what I feel like. I'm just imagining at the very end of it, if he was on the, his hands and knees, Ash just running in and doing this to him. I shared something in Data Resistance Squad. Oh no. Oh, the curb stomp. WWE. None the stomp. See me. Oh my god. May give me away. Oh no. An influence as well. But yes, don't worry. Uh, so let's do a little time skip as everyone gets to enjoy some nice food. Uh, it's later in the afternoon now, about six, seven hours. Jace, Riv, and Asher, all of you guys begin to finally stir. Well refreshed and awake. Oh, Jace never slept. He was just sitting there making sure they slept. Uh, then, yes, they, they slept very nicely as they begin to awaken. Oh, I missed some influence from earlier. Sorry, Gaiman. Sending it off now. And then... Checking it now. New influence. <laughs> uh, Gaiman, basically, that's what happened to him. I'll go ahead and refund it, because it's as, been a little while, but you can still implement. As uh, Gar and Magna are in the kitchen, uh, flower petals swirling around them when you guys eventually go downstairs. Yes, Riv, Asher, both of you start to wake up. All right. Yep, Rob Riv is going to kind of like yawn as he wakes up and then look around and then kind of also realize, oh, hey, Ash, uh, Asher's here too. Hmm. Yeah, He's he didn't sleep either. Bit. And no one came by or... Did no, anything it, or nope just us in this library is actually really boring i tried to read this book but uh he opens it up it's a dictionary once asher came in and i made him go to sleep uh, i i haven't exactly moved i uh... do you feel better um I feel a little bit less tired. Good. Do you want to join everybody else? Uh, sure. Also, why are you looking at the dictionary word for low bar? Uh, 
I actually got to def double check the definition on that. Oh, I just picked a random word that I knew. Um, it, it, it it means it's like a part of the lungs. It's like, you know, the... the... Oh, uh, it's just the word I stopped on. I, I, I got through all of, like, the L's. Oh, that Look, just means you got, a, you got a lot of words you know now. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not how my brain works. Otherwise, oh. maybe I'd actually be smart instead of an idiot. I need to hold no Asher. Asher is waking up with a bit of a coughing fit. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. He squints a little bit. Asher. I'm hungry. Let, let's go get some food. Yeah, sure. He's headed for the door. Stands up with Riv. Why are every single child I've ever had so stubborn picks up Asher in the other arm? We will get breakfast. What's with the coughing? It's okay. Are you sick? Presses his face to yours. You don't feel warm. <laughs> this is fine. Mm. <laughs> Walking downstairs. Not cold, not warm. Looks at Riv. Can't judge versus you. That'd be cheating. Oh, sure. Chase, Riv. Hey, everyone. Brioche is making us all these different uh, potato things. They're awesome. You can make potatoes into anything. Hey, that's fantastic. Uh, there aren't doctors in this time period, is there? Medical peoples? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have a cancer treatment? I, I said I was fine. Um, I might be able to help out a little bit. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I'm fine. Yeah. Mahaha. Uh, Good. actually, you kind of didn't do it with your normal anything <clears throat> there. <clears throat> Mahaha. Huh? Yeah? I don't, I don't think it counts if you had had to cough before doing it. Yeah, I, I think we need to bring you to the doctor, bud. But we'll get food first, okay? Okay. Brioche, tell me you made potato bread. Starts walking oh, and miss. carrying them both. Not enough ale. <laughs> it's an actual prep kitchen. With more ingredients than we're used to. So many choices. Brioche, you have entered food heaven. <laughs> There's yams, uh... With spuds, there's a red, uh, ooh, sweet potatoes, huh? Yes. Aren't yams and sweet potatoes the same thing? No, yeah. actually. I'm not a doctor. They're so. from the same family. Yeah, they're essentially the same thing. They are technically different, though. Huh. I only know this Today because I've I... had very, very, very pedantic in laws. I feel like I might be biased when it comes to that, but uh, I approve. Anyways, yeah, there's russets and uh, Irish potatoes, uh, those two. You know, I gotta have some of those. Uh, a nice uh, big variety. If you, if you guys need a doctor, I know someone who could help. That'd be appreciated. Uh, Brioche to go, please. Okay, okay, getting right on it. 
Ash, you're my kid. I can tell when you're sick without you even having to cough. Well, okay, I'm not that good. Never mind. You're coming with, right, Riv? Uh, sure. You can also stay here if you want. I, I can hand you to Magna. Wait, if Wait. Magna's a doctor, why don't we also get Magna? Why, why is Magna here? Magna's leaving the team. Oh, right, Magna's not here, is he? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's sitting right here, says the ghoulish Gamamon, who is eating some potato bread. Jace jumps and almost falls over on himself. Hi, uh, I'm Gar. Uh, Magna's my boyfriend, and we're dating now. It's oh, aren't nice you the meeting librarian? You all again. Mm hmm, that's me. I like libraries. <sighs> Hi, guys. Jace, Jace, brain does not compute. Evil Overlord is now acting like sweet, innocent baby. Yeah, he's he's having a moment. He's just going to take a very deep breath. Be like, oh, hi. Hi there. It's nice to meet you again. Uh, we didn't really get to introduce ourselves that well. So uh, I'm Gar. It's really nice to meet you. It is really nice to meet you, too. Hey, Magna, do you got a moment? Give me one second. Hey, sweetie, can you go? Can you go over to the kitchen and grab some more food real quickly? Mm -hmm. Sure, not a problem. As he leans over and gives Magna another little smooch before going over to help Rioche. Thank you. Waiting for Gar to leave ears shot and is like, pass Leon. I'm dead aware. <laughs> Yes, we uh, are very much aware, Magna. Why do you think that we were very insistent on you making sure this went very, very, very correctly? Asher, if your dad wasn't here, I swear to God, I'd probably throttle you. First, you didn't go to sleep. Second, you said that you were going to tell the party that I was going to leave? Well, yes, you have to stay here now. You're not allowed to leave him. You, you know, we can probably touch this after I bring Asha to the doctor. How long has it no, been? No, no, this is more important. Treatment? I'm fine. Yeah. No. Yeah, you're going to want to bring him to a different doctor. I'm not I'm not dealing with this one. That? Wow. Okay. Yeah, about to say, Riv looks very disappointed in, in Magna from saying that. Well, oh, guys, you know what? Though. No, you know what? You know what? This is one that I can handle. I'm not dealing with Charles. No, no. You know what? Fuck you. And then Jay starts to walk away. Yeah, too, yeah, that's fair. Guys, we're a all team. Right. Come on. We all uh, love as you begin to walk away. As you begin to walk away, a wall of ice suddenly springs up in front of the door. I'm bringing Asher, or bringing Asher to the doctor. Whatever is going on here can be dealt with later. Right now, you guys need to talk it out, because what happens if you go out there and you die or Magna dies, and this is the last thing you guys say to each other? Like, as Asher as may... Literally, li literally, Ash is standing on the desk right now looking at you guys. Ash? I'm bringing my son to the hospital for a reason. Please let me through. We I'll should listen the, to Ash I'll more. The, I'll show you where the actual doctor is. The one who can actually probably help him. Trust me, you don't want to go to the hospital here. Please do. But seriously, you two, say you're sorry to each other. After words. No, no. Now, just say you're sorry. I'm allowed to be angry for a short period of time while I'm terrified that my son is in danger. Thank you. And I'm allowed to forgive him and talk it out with him later. Not now. As Ash hops down from the table and just 
lowers his staff as the ice wall goes away and he starts walking. What happens if there isn't an after? As he just starts walking out. You act like he's just going to die suddenly. Let's hope not. You never know. No. But I'm allowed to be angry. Yeah, Ash doesn't respond to that as he just walks out and just kind of sits down outside to wait for everyone. As Gar pokes his head out, uh, I got a picnic basket for everybody. Well, I think uh, Jace and Asher have already very much left. I don't know if Riv was also carried along. If Riv wants to come along, he can. Uh, Riv looks kind of indecided because on one hand, uh, like, you know, he wants to go along. On the other hand, he kind of really wants to express disappointment in Magna, but one is a lot more, uh, one is a lot more, what's the word for it? Um, one, one is a lot more pertinent and time limited than the other, so he'll go with. He can express disappointment later. I just couldn't think of the word. Um, and so Magna was left with Charles face down on the table. Uh, Magna, where'd everyone go? I had the food packed up for everyone. He will actually, like, you know, wave by to Gar. That's, you know, librarian, and he likes those. Gar will give us a wave back, looking very confused. Magna is just going to be like looking over at Gar. He's like, Dad yeah, just messed up again. Gar will quickly move over and grab Magna in a hug and just start rubbing his back. No, I completely deserve this one. Hey, even if you do deserve it, I'm still here. We all fuck up. We all screw up. And it doesn't matter if you mess up and screw up a million, million times. I'll still be here for you. And I may give you shit. And I may tell you I told you so. Or I may tell you that, yeah, you messed up. But I will help you through it. And we'll work through it. It's okay. I'm not going to leave you just because you mess up. <laughs> How many times I've messed up, trust me. I could fill a whole library full of that. I don't even think at this point I can even call myself the team medic. I fucked up too much. Hey, you can always try and change. You can always try and be better than who you were before. You are still alive, which means you can change. You can make up for what you did, even if it takes a decade, even if it takes two decades, even if it might never work out, you can still try. You can do it for you to try to be the better Digimon that you believe that you can be and the one that I see every time I look at you. Ugh, I miss not enough ale. Thanks. Let me... Let me go ahead and see if I can help Charles real quickly before we go catch up with everyone. No, no. Okay. I'll go finish um, packing everything up. Got it. Well, 
Why, everybody? I shouldn't have made the croc monsieur. Don't worry, I'll help you get everything packed up, Brioche. Ah, uh, young love, it's so sweet. It's a thing you want to cherish, you know? <laughs> Are you alright? Um... Uh, what would you say there, Megan? <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna roll a medicine check on this one. Yeah, Might go for it. Out of it. Seven. That's 12 dice. Hopefully. Yeah, uh, Magna, he has very severe, uh, bruising on his knees and on his throat. Uh, very much consistent with blunt force trauma. Like, it wasn't enough to, like, say, break his kneecaps, but it was, like, the a tiny amount of force less than what would have caused possibly permanent damage enough to disable him. And same thing with, like, his throat. It was, like, the bare minimum force less than what it would take to crush his windpipe. Collapse the trachea. Yeah, maybe literally, just... whoever did this to Charles literally was, like, an inch away from possibly, like, either permanently or temporarily disabling him or killing him. I do want to point out that I pieced together, like, as Magna pieced together that it was Ash who did this. So I'm just gonna be like, man, Ash really did you a good one. And oh yeah, Ash, Ash was not trying to really hide the fact that he had a conversation with Charles. I don't really have much that I can do to help with these injuries or anything that well. If anything, we'll have to take you to the doctor as well, just to see anything else. All I can do is give you pain meds, if anything. As Magnus pulling out um, the notebook with the medical files on everyone, he flips to Charles's medical file and he's just like filling out these new injuries. Oh, Magnus, you're such a sweet one. I think we all treat you a little too harshly, you know? <laughs> no, I deserve it. I'm too uh, much of an idiot. Don't worry about it. Well, you know you best, so I believe you as a trusted and valued team member of our team. I could probably see at the doctor. That's a good suggestion. And everyone else is there too. I need to add into this possibly going immensely insane. Yeah, we need to get used to the doctor, honestly. Doc, uh, thank you, Magna. You're such a peach. And your boyfriend's real nice too. I have a feeling everyone met, met him at this point. Yeah, oh, you know, it's so sweet seeing young people in love. A newborn love reminds me of me and Domino. And I would hate to ever lose him. I couldn't stand it. I, I'd do anything if anyone ever threatened his life. <laughs> I think... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Magna? He turns to stare at Magna with pure desperation in his eyes. It's alright, buddy. It's alright. Just, we're gonna get you... This is the doctor. We're gonna get a second opinion on stuff. I know you're gonna need pain meds. I don't know what antibiotics you might need or anything like that. But you'll be fine. You'll make a full recovery as long as you don't say something stupid. 
Everything <sighs> will be fine. No, you're right, Mac. No, no you know about these things. Uh, medic and all. I just maybe I caught something in my lungs or throat, maybe a little uh, burnt stuff in there, you know, some, uh, what do you call that? The flakes off of fire. Magnus is looking at you like, did he just erase the memories of what happened? You saw Magnus, you saw you, you were there, I think I, I was a busy, you know, uh, uneating for that. We should, we should go to the doctor now. Uh, yeah, yeah just, you're, you're well, going crazy. I'm that just must sick. Just, I just fell down some stairs, you know. Yeah, let's just, let's take you to the doctor. His Magnus just like, the three feet tall Magnus just like, slowly helping Charles to his feet before walking him outside and just like looking for everyone else heading to the doctor so then he knows to take Charles in that direction. There, There is a little floating, uh, little orb of ice waiting for you outside. Uh, and don't forget, there are always the humans that are able to help. Yeah. So, jumping over, uh, Asher Jace Riv, uh, noticeably Ash is not leading you deeper into town, he is actually leading you guys out of town. Half expected at this point, I don't really want to bring him into town anyways. Yep. Ash is noticeably... As as throw them. Yeah. <laughs> Ash is noticeably walking like very kind of sullenly as he's leading the way. He's he's just kind of like very quiet and just has his staff over one shoulder as he's walking. Yeah, Jason's just walking, he's carrying the two. Mm-hmm. And Asher the walk is, goes for oh. uh, the entire way. Asher is insisting that he's fine, that he doesn't need it, that everything will be okay, that there's other stuff that we need to deal with that's more important, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Deflect, deflect, deflect. If if he keeps it up for too long, Jace at some point is going to stop mid-step and go, "I am not losing another kid," and we'll start walking again. Well, that will shut him up. What about Riv? Uh, <laughs> Riv is mostly just confused as fuck as to what's actually like going on, going on, because he now he wasn't a part of the meeting where he actually got the explanation. Mm -hmm. So he has no clue what's actually going on. He's just more like, okay, I guess I'll just be waiting and seeing what happens. Question mark. And the whole party it, even knows. Mm -hmm. it, it's about a half hour's walk uh, through the forest before you guys come out to a, a large lake. And Ash kind of steps forward, lifts his staff up, flicks it out in a circle before him before slamming it on the ground. And the lake and the area around it seems to crack before shattering. And where before there was nothing, now a large cabin rests on the side of the lake. A very It's a very large, nice looking building. Ash points with his staff to the uh, building. There you go. Thank He'll you take care of things. Thank you very kindly. He walks over and just sits down uh, behind a tree 
Noticeably, it would be out of sight of the building and kind of just tugs his hat down over his face. Just come get me when you're done. Yep. Uh, I'm going to walk that way. Uh, yeah, it's a very nice looking uh, built wooden building. Uh, it's almost like a two story log cabin. Um, very crystal clear lake and you can see fish swimming in it and there looks to be also a large garden set up almost like a little greenhouse uh, behind the cabin and a large shed as well I will go up to the door and kind of knock with my tail and when you knock the you hear some grumbling and muttering before the door swings open and a large Grauman uh is looking down at you and he just kind of cocks an eyebrow as he looks at you Asher and Riv Riv is just going to go hi I'm Riv are you a doctor You need a doctor? My son's oh, not me, without... but he, he does. My son's been without his cancer treatment for several months now. He looks at Asher. Kind of just I'm, I'm, looks I'm, him up and down a little bit. I'm fine. Come on in. I'll get something. I appreciate it. And as you step inside is a large, uh, <coughs> it looks like a fairly normal room, uh, kitchen, a little area for like guests and such. And in the corner, you can see it is a very large, very well-kept, and very beautiful-looking shrine is set up. And there are a couple of candles burning on it. The altar itself looks to be made of a combination of wood and metal, and the entire thing is either made of or painted to resemble gold and the image of what looks to be a uh, some type of golden bird carrying a star in its talons with its wings flared out is in the center of the shrine which is where the candles are kind of at its feet Go ahead, take a seat. I need to go get some of my equipment, and I'll check the kid out. Thank you kindly. I apologize about the intrusion. <laughs> he just kind of waves it off before uh, stepping out of the room through one of the other doors. Yep, Jace will sit down and be like, okay, small moment to breathe. Yeah, Riv, sorry, it... I, I would ask Asher, but Asher already gave me consent. Asher has uh, cancer, unfortunately. Oh. I'm fine. Wait, why isn't Magna taking care of that, then? We didn't have access to medicine. Well, also, he just said he won't, so... Yeah. Yeah, um... Well, if nothing else, I can help. I mean, maybe I'll try to help. I can promise that. I can promise that I'll try to help. See, Riv, we need to keep you. Uh, what? Wait, why wouldn't we, why wouldn't he be staying? Oh, he is. He's not allowed to leave now.
Okay, well, I'm gonna go look at his shrine, and Rib's gonna start wiggling a little bit. All right, just don't touch anything. Sets him down. Uh, Rib is gonna go up and like run up to the shrine and start looking at it. Uh, so Riv, this shrine is, it looks perfectly taken care of. Most of the other things, the rooms show wear and tear, you know, the normal, like, living over, like, however long they were made. This shrine looks impeccable. Like, it has, like, been daily cleaned, cared for, repaired, and it has seen basically constant use. Hmm. And Riv try a lore check to see, like, the actual deity that this is dedicated to. Yep, you could. All right. Uh, any mods, positive, negative? Nope. Just normal. Uh, four. You have no idea... Uh, Riv looks a little bit excited now. Find something interesting, Riv? Yeah, I don't know what this is. Oh, I'm sure we can ask him about it. Uh, he's now going to be searching through the rest of the room to see if there are more things that he cannot identify. Uh, it doesn't look like here. All right. If he's able to, like, understand, like, basically everything else, he's he's probably just going to be, like, intently studying the shrine. I don't know how long we'll have, but he's probably going to use, like, all that time just looking at the shrine until he gets back. I'm he sure knows that he, there is a book. There is a small book resting <laughs> behind the uh idol figure all right well he'll read the cover but he's not gonna touch it um riv you do not understand the language oh he looks so much more excited uh this hasn't really been mentioned but one of riv's favorite things is linguistics because to him it means unlocking an entire different like set of things that he can learn about. So now he looks really excited. Yes, you do not understand the language on the cover. Uh, it looks like the book is covered in gold leaf on the cover. And once more, the image of this bird is emblazoned on it again. And it looks like it was handmade and created there. Mmm. Yeah, he's, he's he's interested. We have lost a riv. He'll never be able to stop looking at it now. <laughs> On the plus side, you're actually seeing Riv be excited again. So there's and that. there there's a few minutes later as the door opens. And the Grauman comes walking out, except this time he has on a metal gauntlet on his right arm. And he is also wearing a helmet as well. And you can see little cables kind of plugged into the arm going up into the helmet. And he just kind of walks over the gauntlet is gold with a few little blue outlines along the joints and the pauldron also has a uh it's entirely blue with the image of a gold lion head on it seen from like the side and he just kind of pads over before looking at Jace and Asher. And you can hear like the distortion in the voice coming from the helmet. Like it's coming through some sort of device as he speaks. Would you mind if I take a blood sample so I can check things? 
looks at Asher. Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. There's no need. No need. No need. That oh, I won't uh, use any needles. I don't need to. Somehow also, that helps, just makes data. it worse. <laughs> also, if it helps, I have data recordings for them from a little while ago. And you can compare it to what they look like now. And you send them into my uh, helmet systems? Yeah. Uh, how does your helmet work? And he's going to be like basically just asking a million questions as he starts forwarding data. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's fairly simple technology, at least among where I'm from. Where are uh, you from? Somewhere very far away from here. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, okay, we have a shoe there. Let's see what else we have. Very good data, by the way, I must say. Uh, very thorough, I approve. Oh, thank you. I have it of every single member of my team. Chase leans in the um, Asher tier and goes, I'm slightly jealous of that helmet. It kind of makes him look badass, doesn't it? Asher nods a bit, but still looks very panicked. I got you, this buddy. level of detail. Oh yeah, and then uh, uh, from, from a couple of people, I actually have a couple different scans because I, I was taking them because they were having problems, and I wanted to see it in real time. He nods. I approve your thoroughness is a credit to you. Uh, you don't normally see that sort of thing around uh, Digimon nowadays. So, what are you doing? I'm currently analyzing his data core and his co coding at the moment. Currently checking it against a baseline healthy Digimon. Oh, is the helmet like an interface? It can store data and it can give me several different uh, ways of viewing things, yes. Oh, so it's like my glasses. He kind of looks over at you, Riv, and kind of looks at the glasses for a moment. Riv will, like, flash very, you both across his glasses. A very primitive object, but somewhat similar. How long has this been going on for you before you had your last treatment? Uh, pretty much my entire life. Hmm. Let's see. Ever since I hatched. Possibly an issue with the replication of data from the core then. That's going to be difficult to treat with the current technology we have. Let me see if I can figure out a workaround that might be able to help. What are the... No, I have that here. A moment while I look. No, that's not going to work. That has an overflow. Oh god, a stack <sighs> overflow. E. I could attempt that, though. We... No, no. Possibly just treating the symptoms, attempting to stop. That could work. That might be the safest option to do here with the current technology we have. Yes, I think I, I think I have a treatment I might be able to do. It won't cure anything, but it should help with the symptoms. And it should at least ensure that things don't grow any worse, so long as you continue to receive treatment for it. Uh, is is there a way that we can recreate it? Yes, I'm. I'll make a uh, several for you. Uh, I I have the resources to do that fairly easily, and it'll uh, be about once a month that you'll require a treatment. Uh, how long does it take to get across the digital world? Depends on the way you travel. 
Uh, city to city? Visiting a lot of cities from here to there? A few days to weeks. Okay. Then Munch should should be fine. Yeah, nod. Yes, uh, I should be able to help you out. Um, I don't believe I ever heard any of your names. Oh, I introduced myself. I'm Riff. I'm Chase. Uh, my, my full name... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh... My full name's actually Rivermere, but I gave the I gave the other half to Mir here, and uh, because you know he didn't have a name, and I wasn't using the other half of it, so uh, he, you can call him Mir. I am Arthur. I'm Jace. Uh, Riv, did you bring Mir with you? I mean, would Mir ever like get, go away from Riv willingly without no, him, like, no, explicitly asking? No, that's why I was so, checking. That yeah, he he probably just would have been taken with. Oh, hey, so oh, did you boy. have Mir come out? What did you say? Did you have um? Did you have Mir come out? I mean, Mir normally just shoulder rides Riv. Okay, so he he kind of looks at you and kind of sees Mir. And little Mir gives a tiny little wave, and he just stops cold. Don't worry. That one's tame. Where did you get that? Far, far away from here. Yeah, we're travelers like you. But... How did you get to the data killer? Oh, that's uh, not the data killer. Wait a minute. No, of course. No? Okay. Okay. Now I'm angry. <sighs> Can you just help my son? I'm, I'm going to kick some of these shins in. He says doing that thing where he's tapping one of, or one of his sets of his claws on his knees. <laughs> oh, that makes so much sense now. <laughs> Jace, what did you just figure out? Oh, I know how he stabilized the stupid X now, and Leon's getting a kick to the nuts. A very <laughs> firm one that might repeat several times. Well, hey, only Magna can do that, man. Don't do that. Oh, don't make don't... me drop you. Don't make <clears throat> me drop you. No, As if you, you could... How did start you... an argument with start an argument with Gar and get uppies before Charles will drop. Gar can carry Charles too. If he can carry Magna, he, he can carry Charles. He he slowly turns to you, Riv, and starts to take a few steps towards you. Uh, Asher are, is quickly wiggling out of Jason's you be focusing on the tree? Because I think he's going to run if you... Asher's wiggling out of Jace's arms and positioning himself between uh, Riv and this guy. Yep. He, he, gets, he gets down on one knee, looks towards you, Riv, and little Mir, and he bows his head very deeply... And you can almost hear him muttering a prayer. Okay, explanation now, please. Yeah, Asher's just looking confused. He was expecting an attack. One of I the god's creations. These are holy beings. They come forth in order to purge corruption and evil. They are divine gifts from the Emperor to aid us in our battles. I had not seen them for a very long time. I thought they were gone. But to see you with one, you 
and it does not attempt to attack or harm you. That shows that you are pure. And he actually looks excited. You you get that sense of like giddiness and excitement through his helmet. Where before he was just like, okay, I'm doing this to do it. Now he actually seems like life is gone back into his voice. And he actually seems like, oh my god. What? Uh, Rip, Rip is just going to be very confused. He's going to be like very visibly extremely confused. I think we're all oh. extremely confused right now. Well, yeah, but not not for the reason that you're... you. You said that you were travelers, yes. Y yes. He pulls off his helmet. From which node do you hail from? How did you get through the data killer to come here? Oh goodness gracious! Can you treat my son first, please, by chance? And I guess yeah. I've got to pull my group in, and we got to have a group discussion now. <laughs> I'll yes, get... of course. My my apologies. He looks at Asher. I will strive to do everything I can for your health, young one. Worry not. I will ensure you get back to perfect health. As he okay. will uh, make it, as he will make his way out uh, into the back room again. Rib is still just looking extremely confused. Oh bloody hell! Why does it have to keep on getting more complicated? All right, all right. Asher, if you guys want to stay in here. Uh, Absolutely sure. not. He runs out. At, runs after. You get back here, mister. <laughs> Rib is just there <laughs> looking confused. Tries to snag Asher on his way. Ah, you. Is everybody in the distance yet? Or are they here yet? Yeah, they are just starting to arrive. Jace whistles and go or shouts out, "Things got messy real quick again. Need you all to come <laughs> talk. Not doing this one alone when I feel like this." Hey, that guy sounds a lot like Jace. Charles just has a little bit of drain damage. Not wrong, though. The Magnus is just, like, walking up, supporting Charles. He's like, needs to, he needs to see the doctor as well. Oh, don't worry. The doctor's going to want to see us. Do we know what node we're from? Never mind. Let's just go inside. Ah, sure. We don't we never heard the word node before, Jace. We don't talk about that. <laughs> What'd you say, Asher? Asher is trying to squirm out of Jace's arms. You're gonna... How did you do this without me for all these years? Did they have to pin you down or something? Silence is deafening. If Carlos oh boy. There's the other things are that true. are more important. Come on. You're my big man. You got this. We got this. It's about 15 minutes later that uh, the Grauman comes back out carrying a plethora of vials on a little uh, belt pouch that he puts all of but one into. Uh, he holds out the belt pouch to Jace. He was great. And to uh, offers one of the vials to Asher. Drink this, the first of every month. This should help to slow the any damage that is caused, and it should alleviate the symptoms. He will sigh and drink it. Ah, it actually that. doesn't have a taste. It's almost like drinking water. Oh, well, at least this is an improvement over the other stuff. See? Oh. All right. Notice noticeably, Asher, you begin to feel like way better the uh, just like a few minutes after you take it. So. I feel the need to point out that Riv just, I just had Riv make a roll, and it was an etiquette roll, and look at what he rolled. 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he has a question. <laughs> and he is not going to be able to hold himself back from asking it. <laughs> hey, he, he's going to kind of like look at the Growlbot and then go, uh, why were you happy to see me? People aren't happy to see me. Jace, we're happy to see finger. you, Riv. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Man, I wish Spectre was here. We we ready to do this? Magda, do you want to do the honors? You usually like doing the honors in this case, right? I have no idea no. what case we're going to be talking about. I need someone to explain what's happening. Well, apparently our little friend uh, Mirror down there is uh, a piece of a uh, divine thing created to wipe away corruption. The data killer? No, something from other nodes. God fucking up. Word does not comprehend. None of you have ever heard the word node before. What is okay, node? so first off, you be quiet. Secondly, we don't know what a node is. Yeah. Thirdly, we're from the future. Yeah, there we go. God, I thought we were keeping that a secret. Well, normally we would, but we're kind of stuck in a corner with this one. Uh, by the He's way, what's also, your name? He also actually decided to help us instead of, uh, you know, refuse to help a member of the team. Uh, As well, Asher is glaring at Magna. I can sense conflict here. Though, as uh, I've said, my name is Titus. It is nice to meet you, and well... Actually, I have a small bit of experience with uh, people saying that they are from the future, so this isn't something completely new to me. Oh, that makes this a little bit easier. We have less to explain. Neat. How far in, oh, in the future would you say? Oh, uh, about a thousand, give or two, give or take uh, two years. Mm -hmm. Fair. I, I will say I've never seen a jump quite that large, but I forward or you, you say you were from the future, so you've gone backwards. Yeah, there were three great calamities all in the same spot, and then the world shook, and now we're here. Hmm. Interesting. I've never heard of such a thing in a node before, but, well, this is obviously not the normal node, as one would say. Yeah, you also, why, you, I know you're mostly happy about seeing Mir, but why were you happy to see me? Because you are obviously blessed. Rib just looks even more confused. He has, like, basically never had someone act like this, like, on a first meeting. And he is extremely fucking confused. Especially if it's in a positive manner like this. Er is going, er, uh, wow, I looked at my name and wow. Kerr <laughs> <laughs> is going to explain. Kerr is going to explain something as storyteller. Titus is going to walk over to you, Rib, and he's going to reach out a hand to you. He's not going to try to forcefully take your hand. He's just offering to take yours, if you'd be willing. I mean, he's mostly just confused, not shut off. So he will, like, reach up a bit. I know, but he's trying to show respect to your personal space and boundaries. Yeah. He, as he takes your hand and or your little wing and squeezes it gently... Uh, you feel like he is shockingly strong. Like, stronger than he probably should be. You carry a piece of the Emperor's will. A being that he creates through his holy eminence to aid us in battle against corruption and evil wherever it may flourish. 
It is rare that we are assisted by it. Especially in such a minor form as this, but... Normally... Oh, there's another bigger take... one. He nods. And that makes more sense then. Normally they take the form of more Digimon. Golden Digimon bent on slaying the corrupts and the filth. Uh, Rip but... is going to look like a little bit awkward and look over to the group and sort of make like the should I tell him like look. Chase just gives him the motion of at this point. Asher nods. We might as well just tell him everything. Okay, yeah. um, I'm technically not a Digimon. I'm actually supposed to end this world, because I'm actually the host for a great calamity, so I'm, I'm very confused why you're being this nice. He nods, and yet you strive, even in the face of your own programming, to preserve this world? Well, yeah, but Vortigard kind of, you know, can take over at times, so. And yet, I do not appear to be speaking to a Vortigern. I appear to be speaking to a Riv. As he pats you on the shoulder. Riv just looks so fucking confused. You're welcome to kindness, buddy. Once I faced down Vortigern in glorious combat, he was a mighty foe, but with uh, with me and my allies, we were able to bring it down. You do know how the powers work, right? Indeed. My companion was a powerful mage, and he wiped the information and data when we defeated him, before we, uh, slayed him. Oh. That doesn't quite work how you think it does. Uh, hey, R hey Riv. Yeah? You don't remember this yeah. era. Yeah, I know. You hear Vor- you hear Vortigern start to go nuts at the fact that he might have been... Oh, uh, his information might have been tampered with and erased. Because he doesn't recall this guy at all. Yeah. He's, he's basically going to tell Vortigern to shut, the, shut up right now because in the middle of a conversation it uh, goes, so, you know, you can kind of wipe him, but it won't dick... Oh, it will. At least this did. We've seen him... What's it been now? Nine times, give or take, I believe. He was always quite persistent. Very frustrating opponent. But he was an honorable opponent, and one that I relished to face in battle when he appeared. Really quickly, is there any way you could teach us how to do that? I'm afraid that it was not my skill that did it. It was the skill of our mage. Ah. He was a very mighty Digimon. One who always leapt first into the fight without thinking. He... Ugh. He kind of shakes his head ruefully. I swear that Digimon had a temper the, a mile long, and once he was triggered, he would not rest until he faced whatever he thought needed to be faced in order to protect whoever he wanted to protect. And once he got it in his head that he needed to do something, it was like trying to stop the stars themselves from rising in the night sky. Uh, Riv is gonna, like, furrow his brow, like, a little bit, and then go, Uh, was this mage perhaps a Labramon? 
Yes, he was. He nods. And did he have a staff and a hat? Uh, yes. I'm just gonna look over at the rest of the group. Jace oh. kind of nods and goes, yeah, that tracks, doesn't it? <laughs> he, he and I went our separate ways after an argument. Okay, Things at least it's... took a very nasty toll for our group, and we all went our separate ways. At least it makes sense how it happened now. Oh, um, okay, I, I, I was going to ask, but it, we're kind of just telling you everything anyway. Uh, Asher is his replacement. I thought there was another replacement running around. I don't recall him being black, though, though he was a Labramon as well. Oh, oh, oh wait. Oh, was you it? have to understand, Asher is the future replacement. Ah, uh, so you were third in line then, to my knowledge. Oh, you were As... you were with the original one. Okay. He nods to Riv. Oh, I believe no. you know them. I believe you know them as the title of the High King. Oh, oh yeah, that track. Yes. We've had old, to... old. He, he's contacted us. Yes, we disagreed on things. And I retired here. Why'd you retire? Because things happened. Events that... He kind of pauses for a moment. About... 200 years ago, I believe, nowadays. It was around the rise, right before the rise of the High King. There was going to be a great ceremony that would unite humans and Digimon together as a new kingdom to try to help Digimon to move past their corrupted state to help them recover who they once were. And there was going to be a new human king along with the Digimon king. They would rule together jointly, fairly, to bring about a golden age for this world, to help it heal from the damage that was still in it. And on the day before the ceremony, that evening, I am sorry to say that I failed in my duty. I was distracted dealing with an incursion of monsters and some Digimon were able to get past our security while I was facing off against these creatures and they made it to the human king and they poisoned him and they murdered him. It was perhaps one of the most brutal things even I have ever witnessed. And when he saw what they had done, as they set fire to what was supposed to be the new capital to celebrate the death of the king, he lost it and started to... He shakes his head. Needless to say, he fled after dealing with them. And then two centuries later, we meet again, and he is taken on the title of the, the High King and started fail. ruling things with an iron fist. Kitsuke, thank you so much for that raid. Welcome in. How was your stream? Thank you so much for that raid. I really appreciate it. Uh, welcome in, everybody. You've come into the middle of our Data Resistance Squad Scar campaign. This is one of our Digimon tabletop RPGs. 
So settle on in and enjoy the show. And Kitsuke, thank you so much for sharing your community with me. Guys, do make sure you go check out Kitsuke. And uh, yeah, back to the show. Enjoy, everyone. Noticeably, noticeably to speak up to you, uh, Azure Dragon. Noticeably, Gar and Triton seem, or uh, Gar and Titus have noticeably been trying not to look at each other. Like they have been <laughs> purposely not looking or acknowledging each other. Yep. It's just funny because Gar's been hearing all this. Oh yeah, Gar is like literally like kind of leaning against the door frame. Yep. And he does not look comfortable talking about this, but he's not saying <coughs> anything. And uh Titus is not looking at him either. Yep. Uh so Riv is going to like, you know, frown a bit and go, if you could talk to him again, would you want to? I could, but we had our disagreements, which is why I'm here nowadays instead of journeying as I did all those centuries ago. And also, I've seen how the digital world has started to become, and I do not wish to solely my hands in its filth. I understand that one. I don't. You want to give up because you don't want to do anything? I have been trying to fight for this world for far longer than you know. The, the people of this world have my respect. It's one of the reasons that I was willing to treat Asher when I thought you were normal Digimon from one of the towns. Also, it is not necessarily the Digimon here's fault about what happened to them. It sounds like there's a story there. It's the Enos. king who did it. You do not know the story. Do you know the story of this world? What do you know about it? Oh, where the thing was killed and turned into the core because of the invasion and the help and then everything being eaten away by the data killer. He kind of seems to think about that for a moment before chuckling a little bit. It seems some version of the truth survived, though it seems like it was distorted. If it helps, we found it in a ruin. Well, yeah. I guess maybe not a ruin in this time. Well, no, I think it's still technically, well, it was a crypt, maybe. I think those count as ruins. It's I'm not, not sure. maintained or anything. Hmm. That sounds like something that either Brother Holru or Brother Demi would have created. Oh, you know them? Oh, of course. They're my brothers. We fought together for this world. I believe I do need to pay them back for disobeying orders. They just never came up. I've never really had a chance to see them when they went their separate ways. You've been here for 200 years. Longer. Uh, no, I mean, you've been retired in this in this hut for 200 years or so, right? He nods. You couldn't find time to visit people you know in 200 years. I have no idea where they would have gone. And you're going to find them by sitting in a hut. <laughs> Honestly, one of them's 30 minutes away, though. You're probably not going to want to look him in the eye. Yeah, you, you know, Riff kind of got a, a a point here. Like, if you want to meet these people, you shouldn't be hiding away. I just... He, he he's kind of right there. For a moment. He's leading that town right there. As he just points out the window at the town right there. It's 30 minutes away. 
I still imagine the town is visible from here. Nah, this is deep in the forest. I don't care. I have decided it's visible from here. There's one little sliver. <laughs> and, and, and Asher's oh, mind is right, right there. The got it. <laughs> <laughs> the medication is kicking in a little too strong. Got it. Asher's pointing at a tree. It's right there. All right, I guess another one of these. All right. Well, it's not a botch, but he still didn't succeed. So Riv is just going to sigh and just go, okay, I'll, I'll just be, I'll be back in a, a minute or two. And he's going to start uh, trying to leave. Uh, 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 picks him up. He's going to, he's going to like kick a little bit. Charles needs to get treated first. And I really don't want to talk to Horu right now. Oh, no, no, no. He's I'm, I'm going to go he's grab Ash. He, he's uh, going to move over to start treating Charles, like kind of just like looking him over and checking him out as he starts talking. Do you know anything about what lies off of your world? No, all that uh, knowledge is lost to us. Yeah, Elders we only know about the data killer. Kobolds. The digital ocean. He, he kind of pauses for a moment. A long, long time ago, your world was faced with an infection. It was eating away at everything, corrupting everything it could touch, twisting Digimon into monstrous things. And it was threatening the other nodes of the network. He kind of pauses as he says that. A node is what we would call this sort of place, this world. Every node is its own world, its own culture, its own people, its own society, its own technology. Some are extremely advanced, such as one of the worlds I hail from. Others, like this one, are more lower in technology. But each world has its own culture, its own unique footprints in the network. And each node is connected through network links allowing for travel, or one could use the dark nets where those things hail from to try to travel to distant nodes. We were called in to try to save this world. I and my brothers, as well as countless other Digimon, we came to fight for it, for it, its people. And when we realized that the world was lost, we began to evacuate everyone that we could ensure was pure, who was not corrupted. And many of your Digimon, your ancestors, remained behind to fight with us, to give the ships a chance to escape and to buy time to cut this world off so that they could not use it as a foothold to infect other nodes in the network and to repeat what happened to your world and others. Your people decided to do that. They were willing to sacrifice themselves, their world, everything to stop them. I and a few of my brothers remain behind to lead them to defend that tower as it released the data killer to cut it off. We knew it was a one-way trip. We expected to die here, but things did not go that way. All right, so if I've got this right, if you thought, or us in the future, we have no idea about this, we're all trapped. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Well, I mean, just... I already promised I'd find a way to get through the data killer, so it's just a matter of time anyway. Yeah, but if we got an infection, is it wise to get through the data killer? Oh, uh, no, no, no. So this is this is because if uh, 
we do the thing to fix the world, it would try to retroactively erase either Ash or Asher. And so if we take them outside of, of the node, it's called a node. If we take them outside the node, it wouldn't, the node reset wouldn't be able to reach them or uh, at least like the data that we could copy down and try and introduce back into the system. So I already promised the hiking I'd find a way out. So that way we could, uh, we could preserve whoever sacrifices themselves to save the world. Oh, that makes more sense then. Yeah. Also, can I, can I, can I go? I'm going to, I'm going to go do the thing. I'm going to go grab him. He's mad at me right now, I think. Is that okay? Do you want to come with? Uh, I'll come with. All right. Oh, I'm I coming have... back though. Uh, Charles, you feel a little jab in your neck and suddenly you feel very, uh, energetic and you feel better than ever. By the way, I'm just, I'm just imagining that as Jace is leaving, Riv is just like trying to like turn around and look at Titus and go, by the way, when I get back, I'm asking about your shrine in the book and what language that is. <laughs> I'll answer them. Oh, that's going to be a long conversation. That's uh, fine, right? You can... Go away. Uh, and Jace, as you turn towards the door, you see uh, Leon standing there, just kind of leaning against the door frame, waiting, kind of just looking very uncomfortable. Rip a wave at him. Yeah, Jace, feel like... a little bit back. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have heard that, but I think we're at a point where it's happening. He nods slightly before stepping to the side to let you get by. I mean, we might have ruined the timeline already anyway, so... Yeah, but there's things I'm still keeping in, just in case. Oh. Ah, okay. Let's go get Ash. As you guys head off to get Ash, uh, Leon is slowly going to walk over. He's going to reach out and take Magna's hand and squeeze it gently before he's going to ask something very softly. Am I in the future with you, Magna? I've... Can Asher hear? Yes. Well, you're sort of there. I mean, you're kind of the big bad evil guy of the future. You kind of wind up destroying all of the world. He, he kind of blinks slowly. It's why I threw a um, paper at uh, Magna, but, well, he already mentioned you destroying the world and stuff, so I think it's a little too late. So, uh, how about instead of us, uh, you know, y y you know, uh, trying to guide you more subtly, we'll just tell you, please don't do that, okay? He'll nod. The reason I'll why I'll do my best not to. Asher, the reason why he's done it was because I kept ending up dying doing stupid stuff. And he gave up because Actually, I don't know. It's probably because I've been doing stupid stuff or it's something that he never told us when he was in the future he did it you for some reason go by leon well yeah he goes by that because you gave that name to him asher is going over to the two of them and mm -hmm. using his claws to try and tug a uh, guard down to his level. Magna's guard already will there. Nail down. So, Magna's an idiot. Just, you know, that, that, that's kind of a fact. 
He messes up a lot. Holy crap, he messes up a lot. He just messed up on the way for me to come over here. He got us kicked out of Hope's Bastion. He, he, he's done a lot of, a lot of stupid, stupid stuff. A lot of stupid stuff. But, he does always choose you. He kind of smiles and looks over at Magna before taking his hand. Even if he is the stupidest Digimon alive. If you're from the future, then all the decisions and things that he chose to do ended up leading you guys to come here. So maybe this is the millionth time he's met me. But this is the very first time I got to meet him. So, if he did all those things in the future, but they got him here, I have zero complaints about it. As he's going to lean forward and gently kiss Magna. Aww. Very cute. That's great and all, but please don't blow up the world. Or destroy it. Because I, I, I would kind of like to not have a, a horrible world and stuff. So, you know, don't give up. He's going to die a lot. Just just brace yourself now. Wouldn't we not exist if that didn't happen? He kind of lifts a hand towards Charles when he says that. The thing is, is... Yes, I could change it, and maybe I will try to change it. But maybe some events have to happen to make sure you guys come back here to learn all this and to meet me and set things up. Oh, yeah. Time nonsense. I hated that it's when prevent- Game Master did that in the that one uh, the, the, the first campaign. It made no sense. To prevent paradoxes, I believe it is. Because if something that's supposed to happen in the future relies on a single element happening in the past and you change it to where that element doesn't happen, the thing in the future doesn't happen. It depends on if it's a closed circuit or an open circuit. If it's a closed circuit, everything that happens here has already happened in your future you're just basically filling in the slots of what's already going to happen and setting it up for all you guys know and for all i know i knew you guys already i knew who each of you guys were in the future so in that case i'm just pretending not to know you until you guys get to a point where you've met me in the past. So in that case, I would, well, what I would tell you guys to do is let's come up with something that you can say to me in the future that will tell me that you guys have met me now. Just call me by my old name, my actual name, Gar. Because apparently he looks at Magna. I go by Leon in the future to you. Oh, yeah, he named you that. When you were talking in his head. So if if I never told you my name, and you call me by my name, that means you know me now. You've met me in the past. So that means that I can be who I'm supposed to be with you, like I am now. Because you've already done everything that you were supposed to do in the past, which means... We're now at a place where you don't know what's going to happen. Where you've completed the circuit. Yeah, exactly. I feel like if this was a show, it would be a uh, it would be a flashback to like when Riv was trying to stop everyone the moment they arrived from interfering. Because he didn't know (laughs) if it was a closed loop or an open loop. And now we're here. We're 
not mm. knowing that has caused all these problems and convolutions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Asher at this and point doesn't really care anymore. He there is so much random other nonsense going on right now. <laughs> he gave up. Oh yeah. No, no, no. Literally the moment we interfered with anything, Riv gave up, but he was just like, oh, well, this was important, but now it doesn't matter. I want to point out that we legitimately tried to stay out of everything, but man, we were not allowed to. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we literally were you. like, no, we don't want to meet with the king. And then next thing we know, the king just shows up. Cur. I, I was talking about, uh, I was talking about what we originally helped Ash. Oh, yeah. Where we where you guys literally jumped right into action unbidden to help Ash. And Riv was trying to stop you and then you did it. Well, you know, we had to help an innocent little mon. <laughs> hey, hey Charles, now you'll get to see if the future is Nemo. Surely it's not gonna go badly for you now. Uh back again, the more mm. of those good feeling jabs. <laughs> Break kneecaps with staff, I must. Maximum pain, Charles must endure. Oh no, Nemo's learned far more powerful spells at that point. Okay, oh, that's... absolutely. <laughs> like hey, testicular well, torsion. You'll be able but... to tease him about no humans being around. Oof. That's... Oh my god. But also, Don't just imagine that. you, like, taking... Like, him, he's, like, we get back, he's mid-bite of a sandwich... We call him by his old name. He nods once and takes your kneecaps again. See, the problem is, is that there's so many NPCs in the future I want to slap the shit out of now. It has been <laughs> very hard not to slap the shit out of them now when I can get away with it. Nemo just points his staff at Charles you, and he explodes. Who do you want to slap, Jace? Who do you want to slap, I want to ask? Holru needs to be slapped. Leon needs to be slapped. Uh... Nemo needs to be slapped and grounded. He's going to be grounded. You have no idea how long he's going to be grounded for when you get in the future. Why is he going to be grounded for? Because no, I told him to start asking for consent. <laughs> yep. Not to mention, uh, I, I still think a lot of <laughs> chat wants to actually, like, stab Michael over and over. List, 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 list. Can you go and stand in the corner? He's, he's, uh, he's, he's in the timeout corner for eternity now. <laughs> Why? Remember, I'm not even remember him going to future. talk about him. Remember him in the future, literally making Riv break down and cry and hastening the process of him turning into Vortigern? That was pretty <laughs> epic. <laughs> Everything about this current set of world has, has Jay said his wits limit. Yep. Yep. I can't wait for Jace just to unleash holy hell on everybody. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You're not ready for when Magnus starts talking to Leon. Oh, hey, I hey. can't wait. I can't wait for Leon to come Lover over to Magnus and kiss him. I don't know. Whoever this guy is, or this Titan guy, knows Paladin stuff, and I feel like I need it so that way I can righteously backhand people into the next century. You hey, can... Chase, I mean, Chase, would you like a set of uh, power armor? Yes. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> Chase, uh, Chase could get a set of power armor from him. So yes. I know in legit life, if someone had power armor backhanded someone, depending on where you backhand, you could just blow the bottom jaw off. Uh, or just I, go I'm, off their entire head. I'm still not hearing a bad side to this right now. The righteous yield, bitch slap. <laughs> I mean, the only I downside would be... Would, would Jace like a power sword? Or a power fist? Or a power claw? He's got small arms uh, specialty. I can get him a gun. <laughs> Before Charles, this messed up. I prefer blades. So, Kerr, let let Charles have the guns. I just yes, realized yes, something. I, I just realized something from Star Trek that'll be funny for Magna. Mm hmm You know how the doctors have those, like, phone scanners to figure out what's wrong with someone? Mm-hmm. That would save Magna so much time, honestly. <laughs> I mean, that's what he has in his suit. That's why he was wearing the helmet. 
mm, power armor. He, he was literally scanning Asher as he was talking. I mean, to be fair, Magna wasn't there for that, so he didn't see it. No. Nope. True, true. Uh, uh, Jace Riv, you guys... Jace Riv, you guys uh, soon get to Ash, who is currently uh, curled up against a tree with his little hat over his face and just looks like he's trying to nap. Uh, Riv is going to, like, pull at Jace a little bit and go, can I try talking to him first? Yeah, sure. As might as well. I think I might have screwed up a little bit. But, yeah, right, here you go. Just... And at the moment that he hits the ground, he's going to, like, run over to Ash and, like, lightly poke his shoulder. Hey, Riv. Yep. Paul! As a little water uh, catapult folds, forms up under you, you inside of the little basket, as the catapult pulls back and suddenly yeets you into the air and into the lake. <laughs> well, uh... As as he's about to impact, he, like he tried to like, you know, freeze like the lake a bit so that way he doesn't sink all the way fucking down. He is he is mythic earth type. He is going to sink like the literal stone he's made of. <laughs> yes, yes, you can influence Kurt. Oh, um, hmm. Mm. I will allow it, but I'm going to need some time to figure out how exactly I will work it into the plot. Okay. But I'll need some time for that one. That's a very interesting thing. <laughs> uh, so, Jace, you just saw Riv get basically a little shot out of a literal water catapult into the lake with a splish. Ah, crap. Jace is going to go run and dive in after. You see that, like, the, the lake is partially frozen over, as Riv is literally just kind of climbing out of it. Oh, good. He won't dive in then, because that's probably cold as shit. I, I thought he said he was sinking into it. No, he said he, he would have, like, would have just... He would have sunk into it if he didn't uh, freeze the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, once he has actually like, got a little bit of a stable thing, he is able to, like, by by like Rachel, he's able to fly like a tiny bit for a short amount of time. Uh would you say that like he's at least close enough to like make it yes. decently close to shore? Okay. He 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 what he wouldn't have been launched into like the deep like middle of the yeah. lake. He, he, I, that's he why I wanted late. to check. Yeah. This was more like I'm going to yeet you because I don't want to deal with this shit right now. Alright. And it only uh, takes a couple minutes for you to make it back to him, though, if you go back. All right. This time, Rib is going to pick up a stick and then go, Ash, I'm going to throw this stick at your shoulder if you don't talk. You see a cannon slowly form out of water pointing at you, Riv. And you hear a ch ch Uh, Riv is going to do two things. Uh, he's going to throw the stick and then immediately try an icicle spike the ground and hold onto it. Oh, wait, what are you going to do for the second one? Uh, he was going to icicle spike the ground because, like, you know, he makes like a like an icicle spike and can shoot it. Uh -huh. So he's going to put it like straight into the ground as deep as he can and just hold onto it. After throwing as you stick. as you get hit by a waterfall of water from the cannon. So nosably, you are able to hold on to the stick. Well, no, he threw the stick. No, sorry, the, the <laughs> stick of ice you made. Yeah. 
He's gonna take like is a this... couple of breaths. Next, I will be grabbing the nearest rock that is not big enough to hurt you. What do you want, Riv? Uh, he's 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 gonna like get a bit closer and like look back at Jace and like make sure that like he's out of whispering earshot. Uh, is Jace actually like you know just like a little bit a ways? Yeah, he stayed back. All right. Uh, upon checking that no one can hear, uh, Riv will then attempt to speak. Okay. Uh, and he's gonna go, You should really go and visit your friend. I think he's sad after spending the past 200 years alone. We ended very, very badly, Riz. Really, really bad. Kerr, you're gonna need to speak up more. Sorry. We ended really, really, really bad, Riv. Like, really bad. Well, yeah, but he you didn't even tell him that you're not actually a replacement a replacement. Because he's no been, one's supposed to know, Riv. But he he's been sitting alone for the past two hundred years. He didn't even know that one of his brothers was right over there half an hour away in the town. He hasn't Riv, left in two hundred years. Riv, I can't show myself to him, not like this. If he sees me like this, he's not going to know, and I can't reveal who I am. And go as your high king persona. I go can't after just. All left. I'm dealing with bullshit right now, and I. There's probably like a million other things that uh, he would rather do than talk to me. I asked, and he said that he would talk and face you if the if you ever visited him. Also, I'm just imagining now where Asher gets all of the uh, deflection from. <laughs> yep. Look, look, it's fine, Riv. It's fine. I, if if we see each other, he's just gonna get upset at me again, and it's probably better off if we just don't see each other or talk to. <laughs> Have you tried talking to him? We nearly fought each other last time we saw each other. I don't want that to happen again. You can teleport. You can just leave if it starts getting heated. But he he was one of my closest. I'm not sure if friends the right word. Because he, he was all about duty and protecting and always just focus on the job. So I'm not sure, like, if we were really friends or anything. But he, I don't want to see him get angry at me again, Riv. Okay. I don't know if I would be able to take that. I have... A possible thing that might help you. Uh, Mir, are, do you like Ash? Mir nods. Okay, take Mir with you. He really likes Mir and Mir being around and liking someone is proof to him that they're still pure. No, it's not about pure or impure. It's he didn't agree with me controlling the Digimon. We've and, fought on things like that. And did you ever actually ask him why? Or did you just fight on if it was right or wrong? He thought that they should still be free to make their own choices and their own mistakes, even if it led to them wiping themselves out. That they should be able to have the freedom to do that, to choose their own destiny like they did before. And... I thought they needed a really firm hand to make sure that they didn't kill each other and wipe themselves out. I wanted to help them be better, even if I had to force them to start to learn. 
I thought if I made them act it, eventually something might stick and they would start to do that without me having to enforce my rule. But that never happened. Would you feel better if I was there for the talk then? You wouldn't be there, though, if it was the High King. I can speak the out, only one. right? You're the only one who knows the secret and even talking about this quietly is dangerous. What if Jace hears? Oh, he's he's a bit far away, I checked. And we're just going to look over I'm... and just wave at Jace. Jace gives a thumbs up. But you can, you can teleport, right? Like the, the, thing, the thing you did with the mirror in the circle. He nods. I and, know a lot more magic than I let on. Well, well, yeah, I know that. And others can go through it too, right? He nods. Like how, when we visit. Okay. Then how about we just say and leave a note one night where... It's just listed out that I went with you, the High King. And the High King took me to help me deal with the Vortigern problem. And we'll be back in the morning and we leave it in my room. And then if anyone checks on me, they know that that's what's going on. And in reality, I could just I could just help you meet with Titus. Just Maybe I think about it, okay? Ash, do you feel good that he spent the past 200 years alone? No. And you should at least, you should at least try. What if I just hurt him again? I said some really mean things that I shouldn't have, and those were the last things that I said to him. Does he not believe that people can change and grow? Because I think he does. He was... <laughs> he was always going on that even if Digimon were carrying some of the corruption from what he called the dark net that they could still strive to overcome it that he always said that his emperor's light shone here even now and that Digimon still had the ability to resist it if they wanted to even if it was difficult and few ever did he always believed in them, even when they let him down over and over again. And what's bad about that? Because they won't change. They're just going to keep getting worse unless someone forces them to be better. And people are going to get hurt because of it in that time. People are going to die. And people are going to grieve and get hurt again and again and again. But that's... I, I think that's like saying I should just let Vortigern out because he should, you know, he's going to win eventually, so we might as well not prolong everyone's suffering by letting him win right now. I'm just trying to show them. I guess I'm not even trying to show them. I'm trying to force them to have to be better. And I'm dealing with the ones who are becoming threats to other Digimon to keep them safe from themselves.
I think you could really benefit from working with Titus again. I'll think about it, but I need some time. It's been so long. And we've both had to deal with our own things. But I'll think about it, Rev. Riv is going to, like, squint his eyes a little bit and then, like, poke Ash again and go, you know, you don't have to force yourself to be lonely either, too. <laughs> I have a job I'm supposed to do, Riv. And Riv I is ditched it. Riv is giving him the blankest stare ever. I I have he kind of just pauses I the thing is my job would save all of them it would probably purify their data I mean it'd save all of them after it killed all of them a restart would basically reset their data it would cure anything that's infecting them. It would make them how they were supposed to be, but it would kill me. It would wipe me out, and I don't want to do that to them. Not after what they've done to me. Not after what I've seen. I don't want to die. If even if even if it's an entire world, I don't want to die. Why should I have to sacrifice my life for those monsters? Well, you don't have to. Just like you also don't have to be High King, and you don't have to do anything. I haven't fully given up on my job. This is another way to try to do it. Okay, but the, the point of this was just me saying that you didn't have to force yourself to be lonely like you seem to do a lot. Who do, before you guys came along, who was I going to be friends with? You've met everyone in the entire world in all their incarnations? I met a lot. But then why would you give up searching if you haven't met them all? Because it hurts, okay? When you've lived as long as I have, when you've seen everything that I have over and over and over, you don't have that, Riv. You've only lived for a few decades at a time before you start over again. You don't live as long as I have and seen everything, remembering every little detail, every time they've tried to kill you, every time they've tried to murder you, every time they've begged you to save them and then immediately turn on you afterwards. He kind of flinches a little bit. I'm sorry. It's a sore subject for me. Every time I've tried to do something, it blows up in my face and they let me down. Like with the Human King? He was... We... 
more partners. He was like the best thing I've ever had in my life. He was funny and smart and kind and brave. He was a fighter who would go out to protect everyone because he thought it was the right thing to do. He wouldn't rest until he overcome everything that came before him to help even the lowliest Digimon because that's what he wanted to do. He was everything this world needed. He was my friend, my partner, my everything. We were going to rule together. Me and him. I would help the Digimon. He would lead the humans. And we would bring everyone together. We would make a golden age for everyone. Even after what they did. We would help to show them that there was a better way. And then... They took him away from me. They did... They did horrible things to him and I wasn't there to help him or save him I wasn't there when I should have been and he paid for it and they took him from me and then they laughed and they cheered and they set fire to what was supposed to be the capital because it seemed fun. Because they wanted to burn his body. Because that was something they had seen and learned about. And then I burned them. And wow. then after that, I didn't want to do it anymore. So I did it my way. If they wouldn't listen, I would make them listen. Well, I... I don't want to bother you too much, but I'll just leave you with two last things to think about. The first one is... Do you think that your best friend would have liked to see how all of this is happening and turned out? And the second one is not really a question per se, but it's just something that you should think about. When we were talking with Titus, he mentioned that his biggest regret was not being there. at the exact same event that you're mentioning. That's his biggest regret, too. Uh, and he's gonna... Good. He, he's gonna slowly turn away and pull his hat back down over his face. Oh, uh, okay. alone now, Riv. Riv was actually about to say that he was just gonna, like, hug him and then leave, so... Every time Riv talks with the High King slash Ash, like, in that aspect, it's always so depressing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it doesn't take you long to get back to Jace. He's kind of upset, but I think it was a good talk. He didn't really want to talk with Titus, though. Uh, Air, if you're talking, you're muted. Oh, I was muted. He goes, I, I assume it didn't go well then, huh? Um, he said he would think about it. So, uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh -huh. 
He probably doesn't know him, to be honest. If he's the second carnation or whatever. Well, so yeah, but there's... Weird. Like... He seems like he'd be kind of actually nice to him. And he doesn't have a lot of people that are nice to him, so... Yeah, well... This world's screwed up, I guess. Um, well, I guess it's not a good idea for me to go up and talk to him. Then, all right. I guess we'll have that everybody's allowed to have emotions talk later, and sometimes people need to be allowed to feel those emotions talks. Please tell me you understand emotions. Oh no, I, I understand emotions. Okay, good. Yeah, they are chemical reactions in your brain that have no action. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I let you read that book? <laughs> All right, let's get back to everybody. I'll sit down with Asher later. Um, any subjects I should avoid? I don't know what you went over. You're all being whispery whisper until he got all mad. Oh, yeah, that's just because he kind of didn't want to talk about it. And then was also like one thing he was worried about was you overhearing it because uh it it he he kind of has the thing where because we've experienced at least like a fair amount of similar things he wants to talk about it with me but not others no no it's fine there i was ignoring it for a reason yeah i could have paid attention that would have been mean and rude but i'm respectful most of the time I don't know what's going on in my head right now. I think I'm just tired and tired of having emotions. Oh, emotions okay. Suck. Well, an important topic to discuss is that emotions exist and you're allowed to have them. <laughs> and looking very smug, Riv's going to start walking back to the uh, to the to the hut. <laughs> you little shit. You didn't learn that from me. <laughs> you absolutely learned that from me. Please blame me. <laughs> he is continuing also, to walk off. Also, Riv, when you make it back, uh, you see Titus is in there uh, putting <laughs> on a helmet as you see him in a full suit of armor now. Ooh, cool. What was happening while Riv and Jace were gone? Um, I think so the Charles conversa- got treated. Yeah, and the conversation with between Asher, Magna, and Gar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, while they were talking, uh, he began to suit up in his armor in the back room, and he came out putting on his helmet. Jace is literally gonna walk into the room, look up, and be like, okay, yeah, I'm jealous. That's hot. <laughs> Do you want to lick it? <laughs> Jace goes, a little. But I more want to wear it. Oh, uh, you're great, isn't it? <laughs> he he yeah. kind of looks Jace up and down. I may have a spare suit of power armor for a normal Digimon. We had a few spare suits that I kept after everything went wrong. Makes the grabby pause. I can see about getting you something. Awesome. Though, as he looks at Riv, I do think that you also wanted to learn about the God Emperor of Digimon kind. And the language of the book. He nods. And it most importantly, the absolute, language. It would be my absolute delight to teach you. I have a feeling we're staying here for a few days. I'll have to go get Spectre at some point. And I think with that, this is a very good spot for us to end off on. (laughs) Yes, God Emperor Hunter is secretly the uh, (laughs) Digimon 
Ah, uh, King. He is the Digimon Emperor. <laughs> I'm just glad to finally meet an NPC that I don't want to slap right now. T Titus is a very nice guy for the most part. He is a very good guy, honestly. Those exist? He He literally led a suicide attack in order to try to protect this world and every other world that re that contacted it knowing it was going to possibly kill him because he saw the people of this world were willing to do it and he didn't want them to face it alone also i just feel the need to point out that magna had one of his biggest fuck-ups yet in a somehow ever escalating amount of fuck-up <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still trying to redeem the traitor, uh, Azur. I have something yeah. else planned for next session. Yeah, um, like, that I was, was the, that was the yes, second tip was goal. It got completed, and then you go and dig <laughs> yourself a much, much deeper hole. <laughs> yeah, I, wa I wasn't expecting that reaction there, and when he said that, I'm just like, well... This tip goal just became a couple sessions long. I will figure it out, but I have plans. <laughs> like, okay, in the I, can, I, can, I can start smoothing this out and start working it out with them. I can start making it so we can start redeeming Magna and uh, helping him with the party. And then Magna says that, and I'm just like, oh. This Man, is that a was lot weird. harder to do. I will you, say, you Brian. Really Go ahead. I will say, Brian, Rex is very much looking forward to the next time you join us for Helldivers. <laughs> and don't worry, now it needs to be redeemed Charles instead. I mean... Charles I mean, Redemption slash Trauma Art. I think, I, I, I think Charles can learn. I think Brian just stuck his foot right in his mouth. Yeah, Char Char Charles hit the trauma button of one of the most powerful Digimon in this world and proceeded to just, like, jam it repeatedly until he was close to breaking. Uh, Shadow, yes, Charles is a Renamon. And, uh, Moonlight Kitsune, thank you for that follow. Um... I know for Asher, he doesn't really have any issues with Charles beyond, you know, he finds Charles to be a little quirky. He does so, get a little uh, bit quirky at night. Yeah, Jace just thinks that Charles is an idiot that needs to fix some bad habits. Yeah, Asher, this would be like someone... Uh, imagine if Jace was horrifically murdered... And horrible, horrible things were done to his body in front of you. And then someone in front of you said something along the lines of, yeah, Jace was just a freak. Well, Kerr, I know where you live. And uh, <laughs> I will settle that out of character. I was just giving an I was just giving an example of like how how would Asher react if someone did that? It was just an offhand remark. I don't know what these things are. Which is why you didn't get your kneecaps completely broken. <laughs> it's true. You it's only true. got bruised, nothing was permanently damaged. Uh, then, you know, I got choked out in the... Char Charles just <laughs> needs to learn that actions have consequences. And he was about to visit Sir Consequence to you, Charles. Yeah. Also, I wonder what Titus thinks of Riv openly declaring that he already promised the High King he'd find a way through Data Killer. Uh, Titus is... Ex Titus wants to go home. Like, he doesn't want to be trapped here. That is understandable. Oh, yeah, like 100%. I'm just more wondering if it's I going to be, if he had, like... Home. I'm just wondering if he has, like, more of, like, a, uh... Like, okay, you do that kid reaction, or just do it. Do it. Do it. 
like the only reason Tice doesn't try to do it himself is because like he can see that some of the Digimon are corrupted and he doesn't want to risk letting that corruption out. So he's kind of just doing his duty here. I still like him. Out of all the NPCs, he feels like one that won't actually betray us. No, he won't. He he's a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He he legit like has no problem with any of you and like he thinks you guys are like, "Oh yeah, you guys are pretty cool." Wasn't the last person you described as just a good guy, Michael? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me. I'm with uh Toshime on this. Give it time. Yeah, I mean <laughs> True. Maybe I should just shut my mouth and not pull up <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm gonna be working on it. I swear. Proceeds to dig a bigger hole. Bull okay. Shit. What I want you to do, Magna, is I want you to take that squeaky toy anytime you want to speak and put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, well, maybe the empiricist isn't a great guy. Like, you know, maybe just like might have some issues there. <laughs> I might be biased because he's a big hot growl on Shush. <laughs> yes, he, he is a big hot Grauman. And he's like almost like twice the size of a normal Grauman. Like he's like nine feet tall and super buff. Yes, but how long is the tail? Because as we all know, Era is only interested in that tail. He does have a very large meaty tail. I am now jelly. <laughs> I no longer want to lick like, him. I just want to steal his body. <laughs> like he he looks like he could wrap someone up in the tail and crush them with it. He probably has done that. Yes, he has. He can also break trees with it. Without the power armor. I'm with the power on. armor, it's an entire it's its own weapon. No, don't simp. Don't simp. You already have someone else. Yeah, you have somebody. Back down, boy. Uh, uh, listen, you can window shop, you know? Jay's tightest possibility? Possibly. Hey, Asher, how do you feel about having another dad? Uh... Okay. Jace, how do you feel about becoming one of the Emperor's Chosen? I thought you were going to say, Asher, how do you feel about being one of the Emperor's children? No. No. <laughs> no. <coughs> we'll see. You get a big suit of power armor and a big beefy body. Just because I get those things doesn't mean it's worth it. I need to know his character first. Uh, you become a defender of the worlds and basically travel fighting uh, any sort of evil activity that happens. Are you trying to make me into a paladin? No. Because it okay. sounds like I'm about to be a paladin. Raharu. I'm sorry, but you'll have to defeat evil like Asher. But Asher is the right kind of evil. Also, Rahar, I, I will say, now even Riv is extremely disappointed in Magna. He yeah. did legitimately just kind of heavily fuck up in the worst way possible. Yeah, he did there. That was, that was one case where it's like, yeah, he did kind of stick his foot in his mouth a bit. It's <laughs> like... Asher was legitimately trying to help Magna out with his relationship stuff. Asher was actually doing his best in his own way. But... Also, Jay... <laughs> also, Jay, to put it another way, it's more Space Marine than Paladin. Okay. Sure. Rib describing it to Rygon as we met someone that Jace doesn't want to put their teeth into the back of their throat. <laughs> but but yeah, hey, it's yay, like I did it. 
Asher isn't so much trying to antagonize as he was trying to legit help, and then he got backhanded by Magna. So now, yeah, he's going to be kind of antagonistic. More so. Uh, Shadow Wolf, uh, Asher and Riv are basically like Jace's children now. Adopted. Well, I mean, let's not go that far yet with Riv, because there's been, like, one proper, like, No, you know... I, I feel like Jace has basically adopted you now. Jace is just the team dad. If you need a dad, that's that's what he's there for. Basically, yeah, Jace is kind of team dad. Though I think that uh, Spectre is definitely your mentor right now. Yes. I was about yeah, to say, like, he's had more, like, you know, like, authority figure interactions with Spectre than anything. Yeah. Mostly because everyone like just kind of, like, pointed him at Spectre and would learn from this man. Well, Spectre also talked to you in a language that you understood right away. That's why Jace is like, Spectre's better for you. Yeah. But Jace had a more closer personal experience the last situation, so he felt the need to approach and try to reason with you. Attempt to reason yeah. with you. Yeah, Charles, would have, just, oh Charles would have mind just steamrolling over everything and just feeding you whatever bullshit he has to serve up, but <laughs> but then Mir <laughs> scared him scared him off, so I, yeah. he would not volunteer yeah. anytime soon. Part, part of the language barrier of that conversation is that Riv wasn't actually uh, too caring about, like, the personal side of the things. He was just more freaking the fuck out. Because it meant that anyone could cause him to, like, end the world. Yeah, and Jace is having trouble communicating that, yeah, he knows that he's afraid. And Jace is also absolutely afraid as well that somebody's just going to reach into him and erase his friends. He's going to accidentally murder you guys one day. Yeah. So, okay. I, Jace, I want to get... I don't know if it's going to happen, but I actually have an idea of, like, why he's able to do that specifically to you. Am I going to have to slap him harder? No, because I'm going I, I'm more slowly going to be trying to shift and manipulate things to see if you would give him permission or not. Uh, <laughs> good luck. I'm kind of out of character. One of those people that believes in uh, freedom of self. Mm -hmm. And violating that is a huge no-no with me. So good luck. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Can I get you so in character that you that I could convince Jace to be willing to do it? I'm not sure you can do that with current Jace after experiencing it. Probably not, but we're going to try. Because story. Anyways. Possible. Thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us today for Data Resistance Squad Scar. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Blue Sky, Patreon, and more. There on the website, as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that keeps this channel alive and going. I cannot do this without your guys' help and support. So thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the stream around. As well as coming by, hanging out, grabbing some packs of cards through stream loots. Or you can also help out by subscribing to our YouTube and bringing your friends in. But for now, thank you all so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest a duke. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Salutations.